And now, holy shit, folks. I always remind people, you know I am suspended for life for minor <laughs> hockey. <laughs> it's my duty to please the booty. Did you catch a rattlesnake and then drive home with it in your car holding it the whole time? Yep. Phil only drinks Coke. He doesn't drink water. I fucking quit. Fugazis. Fugazi. Fugazis. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 457 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka. Here in the old Barstool Sports podcast family. Hope everyone is doing well, enjoying their summers and whatnot. Speaking of summers, I think it's called Midsommar over there. Our buddy Matt Murley. What's going on, our friend? What is up, all right? I am happy to hear that intro. Army's <laughs> intro last week was so bad. What happened with you? What, what's He's going back. on? What happened, yeah, Dore? I, know. I felt people bad. People want to know. People are worried. Dude, I talked to you during the day a bunch, G. I, uh, I, since that one day, I think seven years ago, when I fell back asleep and, and Wit was banging on the door with you, and ever since then, I always set multiple alarms because in case I take a willing nap or if I, I pass out like sober, by the way, doing the work, and I was laying down, put a movie on. I said, if I zonk, I got three alarms set. You know, I zonked out a little bit. I get up fucking 1030. I was like, oh, started shitting my knickers. I was like, what the? What the fuck? The alarms were there. I, I couldn't figure it out. I, 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 it was on my chest. My phone was literally on my chest. I don't think I slept with three of them. So my, my wife, she came in. I was like, what time did you get in? She's like, 8.30. She goes, your phone was on your chest. I says, but was it ringing? Was it making any noise? She's like, no. See, with the, the, uh, you know, the alarm on the iPhone, it rings 15 minutes. It goes off 15 minutes, stops for a minute and a half, does another 15. It keeps doing it until you manually shut it off. Now, if I'm sleeping, what are the odds I accidentally shut off three separate alarms by hitting stop on it? I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I, I did. I fucked up. I, I was more pissed at myself than, than I usually am, Earl, so I was fine. I, it was nice that people were concerned, but legit, just, I, I don't know. I actually, gee, I told you, I Googled iPhone, just Google iPhone uh, alarm, and there's nine zillion posts out there about ha- people having trouble with the iPhone on the iPhone 14 or whatever, so. All right, uh, we were legitimately sucked. worried because, like, like you kind of just said, you talked. We were talking all day. Mm-hmm. You're like, "Oh, it's it's me, you and Wits, the old chicklets again." We're gonna talk movies at the end. I want to hear about your Oppenheimer. You were so excited, so that's why we were so worried, to be honest, because we're like, "Ra like never sleeps through this shit." It happened way back in the day, but he yeah. never would sleep through a full pod. So like we were, Fish was ready to call in a wellness check. Like, we were ready to, we were so, we didn't know what else to do. Yeah, I, I can, I can imagine. I should probably give you my old lady's number just in case it happens again. But yeah, it, it sucked, man. I mean, I, you know, I, I, the same like my state job where I'm trying to welch and get out of work and hide in the closet or something. I'm trying to, you no, know, I love this stuff. I want to do it. I, I was pissed at myself and, you know, I don't like, I don't like to, you know, put myself under the gun either. So I, I was baffled as to why it happened. Cause again, if it was going off, my, my wife would have heard it. So I, I don't know if there's these issues with iPhone 14, but I think all this right, needs to be right. settled. There's, some, a, there's it, some questionable stuff here, and I don't know if the okay, big boys way. have talked to you about a punishment or what's going to happen, but I this sounds primed for a kangaroo court. You know, It could uh, be our second ever kangaroo court. Bring I'll on. be the judge. You can bring in a, all that info. But yeah, I was a little off the grid those those days, and then when I gamble at night on the game, I don't touch my phone in the morning because I want to I want to wait and see the highlights. So I didn't see any of the text exchanges like where is RA like in our group text. And then I, I don't know what time it was here. I've been in daddy daycare going nuts over here. And there's people in my inbox asking about you like where's RA? Is he all right? Like do I need to go over to his house? Like, it was wild times, but happier all right, happier here this week. I couldn't and, uh, believe that Colby answered that text message. That was one of those texts that I shot out, and I'm like, this is a Hail Mary. There's no chance that Colby is by his computer right now, ready to record a podcast, 9 p.m., and he was like, I'll be down in two minutes. And I'm like, what? Let's go. Colby's the best. It was, uh, but we were worried about you, R.A. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, especially when I got up like and saw like, you know, listeners tweeting at me, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, man. I really, really got people worried. But yeah, I... I just one of them things, man. I, people, I think, assumed I was in the morning. Oh, he's out late, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we recorded at 8.30 <laughs> at night, man. I throw a fucking movie on. Zonked, and I, yeah, I, I'm going to get an alarm clock. because it, it worked today. It went to three alarms, and I was sitting here wide awake, but it went off three times today. So, yeah, it sucks. It's a, a blemish on my permanent record, I suppose. But um, I guess, we, fortunately, it happened in the summertime, not in the fucking playoff race. But, yeah, I, I, I had to learn my lesson, whatever that may be, and move along to the next one. I guess that's all we can really do, right? All right, guys, before we go any farther, we need to talk about Pink Whitney. Some of you know it as the highest selling flavored vodka in North America. Some of you just know it as the drink of the summer. And I've got a big golf tournament this weekend, and I can tell you a few things that will happen at this golf tournament. 
I will be terrible, but I will have fun. And that's all because of Pink Whitney. Whether you're on the course, whether you're up the lake, whether you're at the beach, nothing gets the party going like a lovely Pink Whitney shot. It's the shot of the summer. And for the ladies out there, it's shot girl summer. Go shoot your shot, ladies. So enjoy Pink Whitney all summer long. And as Wit always says, we cannot thank you guys enough for drinking it. It is the best vodka on planet Earth. And we couldn't thank you guys enough for enjoying this vodka with us. So go to your local liquor store. Go to your local bar. If they don't have it, you request it. And again, it's shot girl summer. It's the shot of the summer. Go enjoy some Pink Whitney, baby. Merles, what the fuck have you been up to? <laughs> uh, not a whole lot. The weather's been pretty brutal over here. Um, the one highlight I had was this U.S.-Sweden World Cup game, Women's World Cup game. Oh. It started at 11 a.m. our time here on Sunday. So it was a perfect Sunday fun day. So I organized the big party, brought the TV outside, fighting with the daughter. Is she going to wear the Swedish or the American? What is she going to do? Got her talked into the American dress, and uh, it was just me and her versus everybody else. You know, I, I I whipped up the eggs, the bacon. I had 10 a.m. brunch, couple mimosas, get it started, and then the game got on. Fired up the grill at halftime. We had the whole thing going. Uh, couple, one of my buddies, a Timra guy, is a neighbor of mine. He popped over, so I was getting the inside scoops for uh, Timra already, and it was a great game. We got the best out of it. We got 120 minutes plus a shootout. And um, Swedish women took it down and they won again. So we had another good time last. Uh, what was that? Was that Friday morning? They won again. So Tuesday or they're in the semis. Next Sunday is the final. I oh, They can get to the final. It'll be another Sunday fun day. I can't wait. That goalie was unbelievable that game, Earl. So the Swedish yeah. goalie. Wow. She, un unbelievable. She's been unbelievable all tournament. I, I, she's totally new. I haven't seen her when I was watching before their team. I never saw her. She's been amazing. Uh, the U.S. got some he heavy heat. It seemed like, you know, I don't know if people here were happy they lost, but they seemed to be a little like, I don't know I don't, if it's animosity, but a lot of people weren't too upset uh, over this this neck of the woods about, I don't mean Boston, I mean the United States that they, that they lost. I know, let's say, uh, Megan Rapino or Rapino, whatever her name is, not very popular for things or whatever, but she emailed that kick, man. It was like, she she had a couple of those that game. You're kind of like, hmm, scratching your head, little uh, Boston College 1979 type stuff going on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just they didn't have what they they normally have. All tournament, they didn't look good. The U.S. Um, the one girl Morgan there in the final or in that game, she had a touch right inside the box. And in her in her glory days, she's just touching it once. It's in the back of the net. This time, she touched it twice. By that time, it was defended. So they they need a change, change a guard over there. And uh, but the Swedish women, they look great. They're playing Spain Tuesday. Then the other side. Was uh, England won on a big comeback, but the best game maybe the whole tournament was this Australia, Australia France game. It went end up going to a shootout and went all, went all the way to ten players. It was amazing, back and forth misses makes. It was really good. So I'm having fun watching that in the mornings here. Uh, Merle, speaking of uh, shootouts, the NHL should do with what they do. Let the goalies take a shot. <laughs> like the, didn't the U.S. goalies score one of the shootout goals, right? Or was I? Yeah, I don't know about that, but that in this Australia, the girl. Sorry, that's a biz idea, right there. Yeah, that might be the worst <laughs> idea on, yeah. I've ever fucking heard. Exactly. Right? Yeah, like yeah, dead serious. Yeah. You got to give them a play. Maybe you give them player gloves <laughs> and stick and stuff like that, then they could go. But yeah, the Australian girl made the great save in in round five, and then whoever shoots for Australia in round five can win it. They pick her to do the shot. And she missed. And then she had to turn around and go back in the net, which was oh, really yeah. tough. That is crazy. little uh, old Shohei type, type stuff going on there. Guys, uh, we, we kind of yeah. buried the lead here. And I know we kind of had a little pre-show. We didn't really include this at all. But it, I have to ask you guys. Last week, pretty major, major news out of the Barstool world. Uh, Dave Portnoy bought back 100% of Barstool Sports. I feel, you know, I'd be remiss if we didn't ask like Barstool Sports longest employee right here, RRA, one of Barstool Sports longest employees, RA, like, what are your thoughts on this? I'm sure you're happy because I know a lot of people don't see these things, but there's words we can't, we couldn't say, there's phrases we couldn't say, and almost every pod there would be, RA would be going on a rant and I'd be in the background <laughs> being like, no, you can't say it, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. We'd have to cut it all out, but... Merle's RA, like, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Because, like, as someone who was in the office, the morale is completely changed, or did a complete 180. When the news dropped, I my jaw dropped. So uh, let, let's hear from you guys. Merle, you want to go first? 
Um, All right, let's hear from you. Yeah, you're right, the right, longest, right, you're the longest I, I, I was going to go along here. Um, you know? Yeah, I mean, Bookie, Degenerate, give me the five on Cleveland. We can say all this shit now. It's fun. I was shocked, dude. I had no idea it was in the works. Not, not that I would for any reason. I don't really talk to Dave on the reg. Love it, though. Um, I, I basically avoided cor- corporate corporations in corporate America for 25 years, and then I had my dream job, and then we got bought by a uh, you know, publicly traded corporation. Not a huge deal at the end of the day, but... Uh, Dave getting us back. Yeah, it does feel like a little bit. We got the, uh, I guess, the, the cuffs off a little bit. Not, I mean, we still say we want basically on this show, but even like those couple words there, like you can't say bookie. We're going to have pee pee whack because we, we use a common phrase. I love it, man. I, I, I mean, Dave, I don't, I know he's a big brain chessboard type stuff. I can't imagine he had this one all this ma- all the way mapped out. The fact he sells to, to Penn, uh, Penn doesn't quite get what he wants. They upgrade to ESPN in their, in their world and give it back to Dave. I mean, it, it's phenomenal the, with how Dave has ended up with this, but just the creative st- side, G, you know, no, no one fucking, I mean, Dave or Eric are the only two we got to worry about as far as saying something out of line or doing something out of line. You know, you're not going to get some fucking corporate letter from some guy at headquarters or whatever. I love it. Uh, I'm psyched. Uh, Dave's probably going to keep it forever. And yeah, as far as my future, like, yeah, if whenever Chicklets goes to whenever, hopefully forever, but I, you know, if Penn still owns us, they might be, see, see you later, buddy, and punt me. I, I don't know if Dave would be so quick to punt me whenever that time may come. So very happy, uh, very excited to have Dave Portnoy owning basketball sports once again. Merles? Yeah, I love it. I love Dave. He's always been great to me. When Anytime I've seen him, he's been great to me. Like you said, now we can talk about live betting. I don't have to think, oh, what state am I in? Is there a Barstool Sportsbook <laughs> exactly. here? Can I, can I talk about my live bet for next goal and, and goal scores and all that stuff? So all that's done. People ask me, oh, are you going to still gamble? Is there still EBR crew? Like, what's going on? Guys, I've been gambling since 1991, Bills, Giants, Super Bowl. It's not ending now. Like, I'm going to keep going. We'll keep having the picks. We'll have the, we, we got the Euro, Euro hockey has already started in the preseason. I'm working on the NHL previews right now to dig into that. So all that will keep going. EBR, you won't see our props, our Chicklets props like you did before on the on the sports book and the score bet, but we'll still be tweeting. We'll still be talking on the podcast with winners. We'll have games of the week, games of the month, and all that fun stuff. All right, my question now is, I don't know if you remember, but a couple of years ago, I want to say three years ago maybe, we made a video at a dispensary in Colorado. We did a tour of a dispensary in Colorado. We were trying the product. We, it was a blast, but we were told the video could never see the light of day due to the fact of the pen coming in and pen bought Barstool a few months later. So we, the video could never see the light of day. So I'm wondering now if we can find that footage, if we can put this out because it was an old editor that we don't have anymore. I'm excited. I, I think we can hopefully find it though. Where would it be? Like, I mean, like who who would have it? It shouldn't. I mean, shouldn't have. We gotta we gotta give a little chase in the Decker cloud call. somewhere. Oh. Right? <laughs> Shit, we gotta chase Chase down. Huh? I'll, I'll hit him with a DM on Instagram. Maybe maybe he could hook us up because that dude that was an awesome video. We got like a legit tour of the place. You know, hold up me and you hold up those bags with like five pounds each in it. And yeah, oh, you can't use it because I uh, you know, do, it's a legal thing in a legal state. But no, it's like come on, man, are we still doing this here? But find that dude. We gotta run that stuff, man. Absolutely. What, gee, what about you? What's, uh, what's your overall feelings on, on everything? I'm sure you're happy as well. Yeah, like I said, I mean, a, a, I think it's been pretty well known that the vibe in the Barstool office hasn't really been the same since the pandemic. And I think like the second this news dropped, everything changed. And I think uh, KFC in Feidelberg were talking about it on KFC Radio. And I think they made a great point was like, right when Dave said that, it's like you kind of just like became a fan again. Like you, you kind of separated yourself and you're kind of like, oh my God, we're back. Like I love Barstool Radio. Like that is like the funnest shit to listen to, even though it's like my coworkers tearing themselves apart, like ripping each other down. I, like I love listening to it. And I think so many people do. So yeah, I mean, and I think as a producer, I think, um, yeah, the, the corporate aspect of things definitely made my job more difficult just because, you know, you guys are super creative and it sucks when I have to tell you we can do things or we can't do things. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I'm happy I can let you guys just do your thing. And um, I think this is very, very good for Barstool. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think, uh, very good for spitting chiclets too. But again, yeah. I think one thing we can't stress enough too is like how awesome Penn was. Like Penn, Penn like we, we worked with Penn a ton. We worked with the score a ton. We went up to Toronto for that big uh, event. Mm-hmm. They were nothing but great to us. They they'll be nothing but good to us in the future, and we we're excited for them. 
Yeah, shout out Westy and uh, Coop. They they were very good to us. I didn't work to, with too many people at Penn. Those were a couple guys, so they they were fun to work with. But yeah, new day. We don't have to worry about people tapping on the shoulder for a, a weird blog as long as the editors don't spike it. Uh, Merles, you mentioned uh, Euro Puck coming back. When uh, when's the when, which league starts first, and when does it start? I never really asked you about this. Yeah, so the Champions League starts first, and the first game will be August thirty first, and that I think I talked about it one time. It's it's the top three or four teams in each each like Sweden, Finland, Austria, a couple teams from Italy, and all kind of play like a group stage, and then they'll play down into a, a champion throughout the whole season. And we always seem to do well on that because we ride the Swedish teams. The Swedish teams take it very seriously. And uh, leading into that, yeah, the the exhibition has started. Our team, Chicklets team, Timra, went over to Finland. And they went to this tournament in Finland. I, and you don't see too much Finland-Sweden games unless it's that Champions League. You don't see them in the preseason too much. But they went over there and they were playing the two best teams from last year, uh, Tapra and Eels. So I was like, ooh, I don't know how that's... Or uh, Asset and then... Uh, Eels. And uh, I was like, I don't know how they're going to do over there. They went over one four to one and then they beat Eels who won the uh, regular season. I think they beat them six to one. So Timra's looking good. I got my little stick here. Mm-hmm. Timra. So if you're looking for it at home, that's what they're called. They look good. Our, uh, the best player, Darlene, who used to play for San Jose, lost like 10 pounds, they're saying, around town. So he's buzzing. Mm-hmm. They picked up the uh, Philip Hollander from uh, Pittsburgh slash Wilkesbury. He's looking good. So I'm looking at them for a top four team this year. They start September 15th or 16th, the first game. I don't know if I'll be in attendance as the due date September 23rd, but Ooh. if I'm there, we'll have boots on the ground. We'll have the videos. We'll have all that fun stuff still. So we'll see. When's the KHL started up? KHL, they're in the preseason too. I okay. guess maybe, I don't know, maybe now that we're not a corporate company, we can talk a little Russia KHL. I kind of didn't cover it last year mainly because of that, but also like, it's like a little greasy that they're invading Ukraine. So I didn't really want to glow too much on them, but yeah. they're going full thing. And, you know, strict orders from Biz to watch Mitchkov and he's on SKA and he's he's scoring every game so far in all their preseason. I believe they'll, their first game will be September 1st to 5th range. But I, I won't follow that too much except for probably Mitchkov and a couple other prospects. Everybody will be riding with Merles, I'm sure about that. Uh, gee, you, we can't post it online yet, but you, uh, you got a little sneak preview of, uh, the movie I'm going to be in, uh, that I filmed down in South Carolina last year. We, I got a small clip. Can't share it yet. They're still in post-production of the movie. Hopefully fall or winter, it should be out. It's called The Late Game. You can check it out on IMDB, but I want to ask G what he thought of, uh, of my performance in that little scene. Yeah, you were hilarious, dude, to be honest. <laughs> like you had, and I, I, he showed me a few more of you as well. And like you, you've become like a pretty good actor. I have to say like, there's one line and we, we can beep it out here. Yeah. But when you say. That was so fucking funny when you said that, like, I, I just think, yeah, I'm very excited to see the full movie. Uh, I believe Zach Bell's in it as well. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Jeff Zucker didn't. Inc- it sounds like he did an incredible job. I can't wait to see the final cut, but. I'm excited. I'm, I'm sure you must be stoked. Yeah, a very fight up for it. Uh, just, you know, I, I think they had, had me planned on doing just a couple small things. And then I think they realized they had me there for three days. So they, I was doing take after take. It was like doing uh, ad libbing more than like improv, just make up, make up stuff here. And I was like, all right, pick on these guys. It was like, I did that for 20 years, hanging on the corner, just ranking on guys. But they were strangers too. So, but they didn't care. They were good sports. But yeah, definitely looking forward to, to the finished product. I kind of, I kind of chuckled seeing myself in that thing as well the other day. So. Uh, any other uh, thoughts, boys, before we send it over to our first interview? We got two of them for you. Uh, first up, Arizona Coyote superstar Clayton Keller. Uh, great kid. We had a nice little chat with him, so we're going to send it to him right now. Clayton Keller. All right, guys. This interview is brought to you by our good friends at Chevy. Chevy has convenient ways to research and shop electric vehicles online. When researching, utilize Chevy My Way. Vehicle specialists and hosts give a virtual tour and help answer all your questions. When you're ready, you're able to buy online by reviewing available EV inventory or build at your own participating dealers. You can do as much or as little of the buying process online with the help from a particular dealer. For example, you can configure your finance and lease payments, apply for credit, upload documents, and finalize your purchase through our secure checkout process. You can even schedule a vehicle delivery at home 
or at the dealership. If you prefer to purchase the traditional way in person, our nationwide dealer network is available to help as well. Learn more at chevy.com slash electric. That's chevy.com slash electric. All right, it's time to welcome our guest. This forward was taken seventh overall by Arizona at the 2016 NHL draft, and he'll be heading into his eighth season this fall already. Wow. Last season, he set career highs in goals, assists, and points after breaking a leg in the previous season. He also won under 18 gold in 2015 and world junior gold in 2017. It's a pleasure to welcome to the Spit and Chicklets podcast, Clayton Keller. How's the summer going, pal? That's going great. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's been nice to have uh, you know a full summer where I can actually you know work out and skate and uh, not do rehab. So um, it's it's definitely been uh, awesome to to feel healthy and uh, you know do the things that I want to do. You're actually you're you're skating in Arizona right now with Matthews and a few guys too. I want to say Tage Thompson's there. So you guys got a pretty sick skill group that you guys get to work with in the summertime. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, there's a couple of guys, like you said, Austin's down here, uh, Tage and his brother, um, a lot of other uh, pro guys. So it's it's nice to, you know, have good skates down here and, um, you know, kind of be able to train here and not have to, to go anywhere else. What, what, like, what are you guys doing on the ice? Like a wizardry, wizardry sit, shit? Is that, is that how you say it? Wizardry? <laughs> Did I say that right, all right? Wizard, yeah, wizardry, yeah. Yeah, what? I mean... <laughs> I guess yeah, it just depends no where you're at out in, there, in the summer. <laughs> no, because because uh, uh, Wayne there. Gretzky just had his hockey school there, and and Ty and uh, Ty runs the hockey school, and he says that all the kids every time they got off the ice, they'd go over to your guys' sheet to watch That's you guys. Awesome. Yeah, so they yeah. were just all fired up. Those kids at that camp. So who like who's out there running those drills and like what's like what's the new wave of of guys like doing in the off season in order to fucking pop up like you guys have been doing. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's different, but I think early on you're kind of just doing, you know, more individual stuff and, uh, you know, working on, you know, the shooting and uh, things like that. And then I think, you know, as as it goes on, you start to get more of a bigger group. And, you know, we play a lot of three on three, you know, all the fun stuff, uh, you know, before a camp starts. And um, I think that's, you know, what I enjoy most is, you know, just, you know, playing with guys that you don't normally play with. And I don't know, I feel like you you learn so much just being around, you know, such great players. Um that are there and you know I, I really enjoy it you got the the body dummies out there yeah you know, I, I know the Leafs are always doing that and then they'd put like hall on the back like the fans would like tweet it and just meme the guy to death like any yeah, other no, defensemen who were just we getting had blocked. like a, a pylon that they put up but guys oh, just that's nice to talk about how's that <laughs> <laughs> So, so is there somebody running this, like a retired guy or a coach? Is there a skill coach all of you guys, you know, use and, and he's going running these practices or how, how does it all work? Yeah, it kind of, there's a couple of guys that usually run it. There's a guy here that, you know, kind of runs us through a skein and then our skills guy from uh, Arizona is around and he kind of just comes out and helps out and, you know, asks, you know, what we want to do and things like that. So it's great to have, you know, two good, you know, coaches down here um, in the summer and, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, do you, do you want to shout out the guy's name and, and is it similar to Adam Oates and the guys he works with where he's watching film, he's telling them what they could do better and change in their game, or is it more just kind of personal one-on-one stuff? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Brian Sagak, he's the one guy. And then, um, you know, he kind of has the iPad out there, which, which I enjoy always, you know, seeing how things work. I know I like to watch it after just to, to try to pick up on different things. And, um, you know, I think that's something that. I started going, you know, a couple of years ago, just going over the skate and I don't know, trying to, trying to learn new things. You're, I mean, you're laughing right now. Like you think we're anti iPad as you think we're too old school. You think we're going to give you <laughs> no. shit for that? No. Are you I calling the torts? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Cause I'm, I'm big on the iPad on the bench, uh, you know, but players and coaches with, you know, after it just seems like after every shift, I'm always looking at something and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, I guess, see what's you know the better option so you're not like John, johnny manzel i don't know if you've, you guys have seen that doc yet. 0. <laughs> 0 hours <laughs> i'm trying the opposite hey by watched. the way why didn't he just chuck it on and have it just play even if he didn't want to watch it just have it playing because he's yeah. johnny manzel you don't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> his agent should have been doing it for him yeah exactly yeah. 
but I think er- early on though, like t- talk, that was the one thing that talk said about you when he coached you is like, you just, you, you were a sponge. You wanted to learn nonstop and you would like text them late at night. Even when you were watching other games, when you guys had the night off being like, Hey, did you see that face off play? Did you see this? So it seems like just like watching and watching tape has really helped you in your career and, and, and progress as a player. Was it something that you were always doing as far as watching games early on, even before you got to pro? Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, right around, you know, 13, 14 is when, you know, I love to to really, you know, watch the video and, you know, I watched as many games as I could, but particularly, you know, my favorite players, I try to watch, you know, every single game uh, of those guys, no matter if I was traveling, um, where I was playing in the USHL, uh, we'd always throw it on and, you know, it was just awesome to... Who was your guy, Sid? No, Kaner. Both of them, obviously, Sid was, uh, like, a huge, you know, like, my dad always said, like, you know, if there's someone to follow, it would be him, and um, I obviously have the, the posters in my basement of him and all the guys that, that I love to watch, so he was, he was definitely one of them, and, and Kaner as well was, was uh, huge. I just loved the, the way he played and the swagger that he had. So, so you mentioned your dad and, like, your... your- your upbringing in St. Louis, it's pretty cool. We've all often talked about uh, the alumni program there where a lot of guys become blues. They never leave. That's why it's so strong. I think there was five kids your age group, St. Louis area, that was first rounders. Yeah, yeah. Five, five, or five of us, yeah. So do you just like growing up, were you playing with those kids from five, six years old? Like how did that all progress in terms of hockey in St. Louis and how you've seen it grow? Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually from like the the Illinois side, so oh, I play shit. around there. Yeah, you, maybe you get the bad before. rap of the St. Louis boys then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I played around there like uh, when I was really young, and then I kind of moved on and uh, went to St. Louis, and that's kind of where we all um, started to play, you know, summer hockey together, and then eventually, um, you know, full seasons with those guys. So it was, you know, I've said it a lot, but just we were so lucky to have such great players and coaches that cared about us and. Um, you know, I think, you know, we had a pretty sad team and, um, I think there was, uh, one point in the summer, I think we went like two years, uh, in summer hockey and we didn't lose. So that was always something that kind of stuck in the, in the back of my head. Is it true that you, you, uh, I don't know. i probably wasn't you. It was probably your old man who painted the basement like a hockey rink. Yeah, he did. Yeah. You had some painters come <laughs> over and they, you know, <laughs> they made it look like a rink. Yeah. So would all the kids come over and play mini sticks? Like, was it an actual rink that you guys would use or it was just more of a visual for the, for the lounge? Yeah, it was, it was more of a visual. And I obviously put a lot of work in down there. I put the roller blades on and kind of just go down there, you know, every day after school. And, um, you know, my, my grandpa or, or my dad, like they've never really held a hockey stick, but they'd stand on the you know, passing pucks when I was skating around or whatever it was. So it was, it was pretty special. Clayton, I saw a bunch of like motivational words in, in the basement. Did you put those up or did your dad just try to get you fired up? How, who put those things up? Uh, a little bit of both, honestly. Like, um, you know, my dad was always big into uh, writing stuff down and uh, writing my goals down and, and things like that. So that was something I still have the one that actually from, um, I think when I was 14, uh, like all the things that I, that I wanted to accomplish within the next, you know, two years. And, um, I wrote them down and, you know, put them on my closet door. And that was kind of something that I always looked at every single day and something that's kind of stuck with me and, um, just a good reminder, uh, for me, you know, every single day. I mean, you were on the path at a young age, like national program, BU for one year, you're into the NHL, but before that was Shattuck. And and everyone's kind of heard of that, I think, because of Crosby and Taves and all the other guys. How did it come about that you were going there, decided to go there? Were you kind of recruited or was that more like you knew what those guys had done and you kind of wanted to start there as well? Yeah, well, that was a big part of it. But um, I also had um, a couple of good friends that I played with uh, in the summer um, that were going there and they kind of reached out and, um, you know, said, what are your thoughts? And um, so we kind of looked into it and there was a little bit of recruiting, I, I think. Um, and so I went out there, did the visit and, um, you know, I, I loved it. I, you know, the first thought was, you know, I was, I was going to be homesick. I think I was like 14, 14 years old. Yeah. And, um, I don't think that happened ever once. I think you're just around your teammates all the time. You're living with them. And, um, so there's never really time for that. So I think it was an awesome experience. Sneaking away, uh, ordering some Vegas bombs with them. 
I was doing a little digging uh, before the podcast and Fish <laughs> said that you're, you're obsessed with Vegas bombs. He said even to the point, <laughs> point last year at Rookie Party, you ordered 280 of them. I'm taking <laughs> What's the a Vegas ball? I don't know. Besides like, RA uh, during the finals. <laughs> I think it's like, well, I think it, it, it depends, but it's like Red Bull, like Peach Snaps and like Jaeger or something like that. Snaps. So, I love it. The guys, uh, I'm not the only one that loves them, but a lot of guys liked them. And um, we did we did maybe set a record at that place for, for how many we ordered. That's got to be awesome, though, like being in that environment and just being around the guys nonstop. It's just like an ultimate boys club. And uh, I, I, I even saw, I, I don't know if it was a year or two before that, I, Witt always strokes himself off about winning the Quebec uh Quebec Pee Wee tournament. Yeah, 97. Uh -huh. You 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 also were able to go there. Was that with that stack team that you talked about? Yeah. So I actually got lucky. I got to go twice and we didn't win either year, uh, unfortunately, but wow. that was a great experience. Well, obviously it's an amazing tournament and we had, you know, some some good battles there and there were other great teams as well. So um so actually we didn't get to win that one. Were you skating? All summer, were you one of those kids that was doing like five, six, seven tournaments a summer from a really young age, or were you putting the skates away? Yeah, I, I played in a couple of tournaments, but um, I feel like I still had a balance. Like I was, I still golfed a lot. Like that was kind of what I did on the off weekends. Me and my dad would go play, and that was kind of also how I got into golf as well. So it was a good balance of both. It wasn't, I never felt like I, you know, needed a break or anything like that. So, you know, I played in a lot, but, um, yeah, not not a ton, I guess. So that's some of the other dirt that uh, uh, Fish teed me up for. Now you're an incredible golfer. Would you? What are you a scratch? Is that yeah, your index? A scratch, yeah. He goes. Ask him to rank our our foursome. It's you, Schmaltzy, who I heard is unreal too, Kessel and Fish. He said rank What's them in Phil's order. Game He's like. <laughs> you want me to rank, and you want he, me to say he, it's he all, said all have him rank them. I'm interested to see what he says. Right now, out ball sure. in the hole. Who's finishing one through four? Right now, for sure, Schmaltzy, me. What? Schmaltz is I that good? I don't know. Um, fit, uh, Phil and Fish are pretty tight. I'll probably say it's Phil three and, and Fish four. Just okay. Cause I've, I've said it before, but uh, Phil's like exactly how you think he'd be on the course, but he's like a gamer. Like anytime that he needs to like get it up and down or like, make the putt like he's making it like it doesn't matter where it is um, he's, he's always telling you he's gonna make the putt before he even hits it and he usually makes it so that it's pretty fucker. funny i'm that gonna make cocky. this <laughs> well uh where, where do you golf at in in arizona don't you guys go to silverleaf and sometimes you even tee it up with john rom and a, a bunch of the studs that live here yeah so i joined there um right before COVID actually and um it's unbelievable i play there quite a bit when I can. And, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to, to play with Rom a couple of times, Chez Reeve, uh, Kevin Streelman. Uh, there's, you know, a lot of guys that I've gotten to play with and became friends with. So it's, uh, it's a pretty special place. And, um, you know, I, I love it there for sure. Hey, did, didn't some guy maybe buy it individually and then he fixed it all up and now it's even like, like it's five times better than it was before which is yeah. hard, hard to believe. And I, I'm pretty sure it's about half a million for, uh, for uh, what do you call them? With? It's like the top Membership, club the there. Initiation. They're initiation. In like I, got yeah, in I got in before Whisper. that. Yeah, thank <laughs> I got God. In before that. He got the junior um, Coyotes deal. Yeah, I did. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, Ben Herman actually bought it, you know, a couple of years back and he kind of had, you know, some people from, I think, the Grove uh, that did the range there and they kind of redid the whole entire range. Yeah. Um, you know, put like a nice bar and they're adding a restaurant up there as well now. So it's kind of like a, a great place to hang out after the season. We golf there a ton and when he'd finished up, you know, it's a great place to hang out. There's like ping pong tables, things like that. So it's just, and the view is amazing oh, as well. So okay. okay. That's the third and final thing he brought up is this <laughs> ping pong nonsense <laughs> to the point, to the point boys where this motherfucker hired a coach, a ping no. pong coach. <laughs> Give us the backstory on what's going on with the ping pong. Yeah. So last summer I couldn't really do much and I get back from the gym or, or rehab. Uh, in my downtime, uh, I had a buddy of mine live with me, uh, Logan Brown actually. And, um, so we'd come down and play ping pong every single day and, uh, we just got so competitive with it and, um, 
Yeah, I actually found a guy uh, on the internet that was like, you know, the, <laughs> the state champion. And uh, so, I, <laughs> so he came over, came over and uh, showed us how to play and hold it the right way. And um, so that's something that, that I enjoyed to do when, when I was hurt. Yeah. Where yeah, would you fly nowadays? Where would you have ranked your game out of 10 compared to before and after he helped you out? Was he a good coach? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. He told you what, you're, hold, you're putting lot. the Forrest Gump spin on shit now? I'm trying to, yeah. But, I mean, it's tough. But, I mean, from the time that I started, I, I wasn't great. I was okay. But I'm a million times better than, than when I started. I respect that, man, getting the coach online. You just got to be careful with those Craigslist ads. You don't, you don't want to hire like yeah, a serial no, killer come over and chop your head off. It's Everyone like, oh, Clayton that. Keller's on the IR. <laughs> <laughs> his head fell off. He was stabbed by his ping pong coach. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite the headline. Maybe yeah, it'd take I, a little focus off the rink situation. Uh, all right, we got anything? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to say another uh, recreational activity. Did a little fishing uh, in New England last weekend, I understand, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Uh, I was up there for, uh, Connor Garland's wedding and, um, we went out on the boat a couple of times and, uh, I got to catch some fish and, you know, hang out. It's nice. I haven't done that in a long time. So, uh, it was great to be on the water and, uh, the weather is just amazing compared to Arizona because it's, it's a little hot here right now. So it was nice to, uh, to be there for that too. Get a few stripers. Yeah, we did. The did. first time yeah. fishing in New England, like off the coast of New England. Uh, no, I had done it, um, years back, but it's been like, you know, probably eight years. So it's, it was nice. That's something that I also like to do. So damn, you do a lot of shit, man. Like ping pong, fishing, golf, any other sports you do in the off season? No, that, that's, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. I would say you, you, you got the, the calm demeanor for fishing. You're, you're, you're always seem very even keel. Is there anything that like fires you up that you get angry or mad at? Like you ever, you ever get a temper uh, about anything like in, in those sports? No, just in general. Like what fires oh. you up the most? Like you invest I mean, in stocks or something, you know, hockey like, for three sure. Putting. <laughs> yeah. Hockey for sure. Yeah. Three putt. <laughs> no <laughs> hockey. I mean, yeah, that's what I would say is obviously what I snap at the most. I would probably say, I mean, sometimes golf, but I get over it. Ping pong, the same thing. I've, I broke a couple of rackets, but. I, well, I, we were already talking about Phil and, and there's been a few funny clips that have popped up from his time with the Penguins when him and Malkin would go back and forth. Did you ever get it in, into it with Phil, uh, with Kessel on the bench? Uh, I mean, not a ton, maybe a couple of times, but um, yeah, I wouldn't say a ton. Maybe more so off the ice of him just chirping me and me serving him back. And it was kind of that kind of, you know, back and forth. He'll, he'll, he'll never come on this podcast, but the legend grows as we get guys he's played with come on. I think, was it March or so who came on and told us that story about how he came in? He goes, but you guys better fucking win. I'm not flying back to Florida. <laughs> uh, do you guys have any iconic uh, Kessel stories from, from your time uh, when, he was, when he was with the Coyotes? Like, is there one where you guys just get it going in the group chat? Just uh, You guys are belly laughing about? I don't know. I mean, he wore a pretty pretty funny outfit to one of the games uh and and he i don't think he ever wore the, the shirt and the jeans and the the shoes ever again so that was kind of something <laughs> oh, that guys was, all that over was, him. Was, no that's yeah. when the coyotes were posting at the social media the walk-ins and he had yeah. the most like he the was dad bod was with the with a mask on and <laughs> head down <laughs> that was pretty funny i'll have to send that on to you yeah, send that over so we, when we post it, we can we can just mock <laughs> Kessel about how he's a zillionaire. I gotta ask like him an first asshole. though; he might oh. kill me if I send it to you. Oh, really? He's, he he gets sensitive about that stuff. But, oh no, he he just you know he says that. All right, you don't really. Care. So he doesn't like the photo I shared of him holding a nachos with a large cheese attached, like thirteen <laughs> hours before the gold medal game in two thousand ten. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Uh, so, Clayton, after uh, Shattuck St. Mary's, you were at the, the national program. It seems like you really kind of like found a, a, another level to your game there, like based on the stats. Is that a, an accurate thing to say? Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, it was, it was nice because, you know, from Shattuck, I, moved, I had already moved away from home. So I kind of knew what that felt like. And, uh, you know, it was a great experience playing there. So many, you know, great players. And, you know, I had great coaching staff. Um, you know, everyone just went the extra mile for us. And, you know, I truly believe that, you know, we all got, you know, so much better uh, playing there. And, um, you know, those those two years were unbelievable. It was, it was so much fun. 
Hey, here's a little fun fact for you guys. Before Jack Hughes broke your record, you had the record at the time for 189 points in your two years there. That, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, who were you playing with who, who was setting you up that much? Uh, we, had, we had a great team. Uh, Joey Anderson, Kiefer Bellows, uh, Adam Sox was there. Um, oh, man. Ottinger was our goalie. Uh, but probably say Foxy probably set me up the most. Oh, he is fucking filthy. Yeah. He was so good back yeah, then. Yeah, when you first saw him, was it kind of like everyone else? You're like, oh, he's like not that fast. He's not that big, but like little head fakes. Was he doing that stuff then? Like all the 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 misinformation he's given on the ice is so so like ridiculous to watch. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think he wasn't like you know super highly touted. Like at the start, he was kind of like everyone like didn't know a ton about him. Yeah. And then I think it was like the first skate that we ever had, and I was like. This guy's unbelievable. And then we kind of just like click uh, from the from the first day. We've been, you know, great friends and we had so much chemistry on the ice. And um, you know, I could tell, you know, right away, like this guy's a star and he's gonna be. And I told every team at the at the combine, like, you know, this this guy's unbelievable. And um, it's good to, you know, see how much success he's having. You were in your meetings acting as his agent, just pumping Fox's tire to every team? Well, yeah, I mean, they ask you, you know, like about guys you played with or certain, oh. you know, teammates. So, yeah, he was a guy that I always, you know, was like, you know, he's the real deal. A lot of the, the guys from that team, I mean, you guys went on to win the gold medal at the World Juniors, right? So that was in yeah. Montreal. And wasn't that the Troy Terry shootout? Yeah. Yes, that was, that was there. That was, that was insane. And so like, was he just, was he showing in practices that he was ridiculous at that? Like, did you guys already know? Like he was a gamer when it came to the the shootouts. Um, I mean, a little bit. Like we practiced it um, a couple of times, but like we didn't practice it a ton, and everyone kind of scored here and there, and we didn't really know who was gonna go. And he was actually my roommate, so um, it was you know pretty crazy, you know, talking with him after you know the uh, the shootouts and stuff like that. And he's like, I don't even know what I was doing. Like, it's like I've never gone five all that much. <laughs> Not as much as Biz. Uh, you get drafted by Windsor, the OHL, but you opted for for BU. What was the like the side factor in coming to BU? Yeah, I just uh, you know I loved uh, David Quinn, um, Albie O'Connell. You know he kind of recruited me, and um, who else? Steve Greeley as well. And uh, I just loved it. I I actually visited BC first, and I liked my parents. So I was like, I think I want to go here. And then a couple Squids. hours later, I I saw BU and. <laughs> Um, I knew that was a, the place that I wanted to be. I, I kind of liked the the city feel and, you know, I lived in the summer, like right across from, you know, Fenway. So it was just like the perfect setup. And uh, we had a great team as well. Uh, McAvoy and Greenway were already there, two guys that, you know, I was super close with. And um, that just was, you know, the dream spot for me. Like, th- does the bean pot have a strong allure in the Midwest? Like now, I mean, the guys out there want to come to play the bean pot. Or is that more like a local thing, you think? Uh, I don't know. I think it was, it's maybe a more local thing, but when I committed, I, that was like the first thing that they talked about. And so then I started, you know, to, to watch it as much as I could and, um, you know, chime in. So it was, it was pretty cool to, to be able to plan that. And, you know, everyone, you know, in Boston knows when the bean pot's on and, you know, all the schools know. So it's, it's pretty fun. You mentioned the guy who recruited you and then Quinn, but like, were other schools asked you to come and did you go to other visits as well? They went to BC. Yeah. Well, I know you went to BC, but like outside of those two, I mean, you, obviously you did what you did at the national program. It's just like the, the BC schools were the only ones you visited. Uh, no. So I did five official visits. I think it was uh, around there. Michigan, Michigan State. Um, where else I got? Notre Dame, uh, uh, BERBC. Maybe there's one more. Oh, North Dakota. That was, those were the, the ones I visited. You really wanted to do your due diligence then. Yeah. So I think it was when I was, uh, 14 in the summer and I kind of just knocked them all out. Um, and that summer and kind of played from there. Oh, 2014. Not when you were yeah, 14 I, years old. Shit. Yeah. I was no, like, when wow, I was 14 fuck, years old. Getting really was, ahead of it. Wow. Well, when I was 14. <laughs> the when Vegas bombs. <laughs> <laughs> getting so, after it. They've like changed all the rules now. Actually, Albie's coaching at ASU. Yeah. He is. Pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, that's your guys' rank, dude. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm glad it is, yeah. Like, like, what, what, what was that like when you found out you were going to be playing in there? And it turned out to be, 
an incredible home ice advantage. I mean, your guys' record was great. And the fact that, like, it was packed and it was probably pretty fun. But when you heard, you had to be a little shocked, right? Yeah, for sure. I think all of us were. And um, we were just like, all right, well, we can make the most of it and, and go from there. And I think, you know, we just, we, you know, it was, everything was new. And, you know, we kind of just took it head on and said, you know, there's nothing we can do. And, you know, we're, we're paid to play hockey. And, um, you know, everything worked out. It was a good atmosphere and it's a lot closer to, to all of us. And, um, you know, we, we had a good record and the ice was actually really good. So, so that was a positive as well, but, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was fun playing there for sure. First pro game was in say, hometown St. Louis, man. Were you a bundle of nerves that night or, or just yeah. kind of trying to keep it cool? Yeah, for sure. It was a uh, pretty crazy 24 hours. Um, we lost, uh, to Duluth, um, in the regionals, uh, and flew back to Boston that night, landed in Boston, packed up a bag and went straight to the airport, um, and flew out the next morning at like seven or 8 AM, flew right to St. Louis and then, uh, played the next night after that. So it was a pretty crazy 24 hours. And yeah, I was, I was pretty nervous for sure. That's yeah, surreal. Um, let's go back yeah. to that first year with the Coyotes. I mean, you were, you ended up third in Calder voting and just like really took the league on by storm. Like, what do you think it was that made you like ease in with such like a, a good transition? Yeah, I think, um, we had, you know, a great team, you know, that, you know, helped me fit in right away. We had, uh, great coaches as well. They were, they were so good to me. And, um, I think, you know, just, you're so excited. You're, you know, your first full season and playing in buildings you haven't played in and, um, you know, you're playing against guys that you've always looked up to. And, um, so I think it was, you know, just a perfect fit to being in Arizona and, um, you know, obviously we had a rough start to the year that year, but. Oh um, my God. What, 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 what did <laughs> yeah, you lose? Like, like one and 11. <laughs> no, I don't think you guys won a game uh, for the first 18 games, wasn't it? Yeah. I think it was, it was my first year broadcasting. <laughs> I was polishing turds every night on, on the fucking, uh, on the radio. <laughs> yeah. It went a while. I think our first win was in uh was in Chile in overtime and we were up we were up like three three. Oh, no, you were up two nothing or with two a minute and a half left and you guys blew it and <laughs> I, I froze on the radio. Bob Heathouse <laughs> threw it over to me and we're like going into overtime and I'm like ah like I'm like ah, I'm trying to be positive, but what the fuck is going on here? Eighteen in a row? Somebody do something. <laughs> so it's nice to finally get that one in OT. Yeah, yeah, I think Goose scored in, in the OT. Yeah, he night. did. Yep, yeah. yep. I, I got a good that. memory. Hey, Kels, for a guy who got his yeah. face punched in his whole career. <laughs> Not bad. Not you remember bad, who I had your, your sister now? You? Yeah, right. Fucking A, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you get, do you get a bonus when you finished uh, top three in Calder voting? Did you get a little money? Um, I'm not sure on that one, but I think there's, there's, I think there's five bonuses that I could hit. Um, my rookie year, it's like, there's goals, assist points, uh, like time on ice, uh, plus minus. I think maybe that was in there. Um, and you hit them all. Yeah. My first year, I think I did. Oh, yeah. Shit. That, I mean, that's, that's ashtray money now, but congrats, man. That's fuck. That's huge. Speaking of, uh, bonuses, I was looking at your contract and then like it says this past season, you got a 3 million bonus. Is that July 1st check that just arrives in the mail? <laughs> uh, or the bank know. account, I, I guess. I can't remember if it's July first. It might might be uh, a little bit later, but um, yeah, it's definitely nice to see that one go on the account. You just oh, sign sure. into the online banking in the morning. You're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you set your alarm for twelve oh one p.m. Just wake up <laughs> yeah. a.m. I guess. Sorry, idiot. Yeah. It was funny. You've definitely uh, done that. Yeah. <laughs> A like R.A. Ago, last was, uh, last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he slept in the last pod. They they recorded at 6 p.m. Um, 8 p.m. What were you just going to say, Kels, before we, we no, knocked you? I was going to say, uh, I was like, maybe a couple of years ago, uh, I was with uh, Austin on July 1st. and we were, uh, we were going to get breakfast and then we were going to skate or something. And I was just first in line. I was like, all right, like, yeah, like, uh, hey, whatever. And then I had looked at I looked at my phone i realized it was july 1st i was like oh my god you just got 15 million 15 like i should i should have been you should have been he signed a deal this was yeah no he signed a deal where he got paid like 31 
or 32 million in the first 13 months of his deal where on back to back July 1st he got 15 million dollar wires. Oh. That's just Oh hey, yeah, that's 15, Judd 15 going 15 million 210,000. <laughs> Don't forget about the extra 210 grand. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's fucking Astray money. That's Judd going to work, boys, getting you front <laughs> that money front loaded. And I think that was pre-COVID too. So you know the fucking market just went crazy, so he's tripled it probably since then. God, he could he could afford a, he could afford a membership at uh, at your golf club now. Anywhere, yep. <laughs> do, you, do you do you golf with him at all? Uh, a little bit, yeah. He's he's been big into the tennis, so I haven't played a ton of tennis, but um, I know he's huge into the tennis. Right you guys now. should meet in the middle at, at pickleball. You're the ping pong player. He's the tennis player. That's why they invented it. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't played much pickleball to be honest. I'm putting in a court at my house. I'll get you over. All right. I'm going to put a, yeah, you guys can use it anytime. We get, we should have little tourneys. We'll get some Vegas bombs going. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll live stream it for Barstool. Um, you got anything, R.A.? Yeah, Kels, uh, during your rookie year, what was your, I guess, welcome to the NHL moment? Some guys it's getting hit or just seeing someone they worshiped growing up. What was yours? Um, I would probably say playing against Crosby and, and Kane for the first time. I think that was super cool. Just two guys that I, I love to watch play and, idolized from you know, such a young age and um you know it was just so cool to to be out there with them did you have to like catch yourself and not like being too starstruck remember you're playing a game out there yeah for sure i think you know in warm-ups is kind of when you're you're pretty starstruck and then you know after that you kind of settle in and um you know just play from there um i i think we got to get into it like one of the main reasons we wanted to have you on was to talk about this gruesome injury you've came back from Kells. like it was it was heartbreaking to see you go down because you were having such a good season and it happened towards the end. And then you're like, Oh God, like, you know, is this guy ever going to be the same? And then you end up, you broke your femur is what happened. But obviously with your dedication to your craft and, and, and your persistence, you ended up having the, your best year ever career highs. I think you've finished with the most points of any coyotes, a coyote player of all time passing uh, Keith Kachuk. Like, Take us through the entire experience, man, because I'm sure it was hell for a little bit, but you came out from the other side, man. Yeah. Where, where do you want me to start? Well, when it ha- fucking ha- happened. Remember the play? Like what happened on that? I mean, obviously people have seen it, but what, what, what kind of break it down, I guess. Yeah. So I got the puck in our zone. We kind of had like a three on two and um, I was probably going as fast as I've ever skated, at least from what I remember. And I was I was like, all right, I'm going to try to, you know, take this guy wide and, you know, take it to the net and score. And um, I remember protecting it on my forehand a little bit and the puck kind of bounced and um, I kind of like caught a piece in the ice and the guy was kind of like reaching on me too. And um, there was nothing I could do. I was going so fast. I couldn't stop myself. Usually, you know, if you, if you fall or something, you can kind of turn and slide into the boards and, um, so yeah, it was just kind of one of those weird plays. I did like a speed wobble on the ice and there was just nothing I could do. And then, you know, the next thing I remember was laying down and um, trying to move and I couldn't. And oh, I was trying Jesus. to just get up with my one leg and uh, I couldn't roll over or anything. And, you know, the next thing I know, you know, our trainers were out there and they had the stretcher coming out. And um, yeah, that was, that was pretty rough. Was it excruciating pain? Like at that point, like, are you like in like horrific pain or is it more just like the shock of what happened? Um, it was, it was shock for, you know, probably the first couple minutes. Like I remember Schmaltzy and, and Ghost came over and they were like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, Ghost says it to me. He's like, the thing you said to me was like, uh, yeah, crap my mouth guard. I guess I said that to Ghost like right when it happened. And then, um, yeah, like I was kind of in shock and then like, I don't know, like a couple minutes later, it kind of like sat in and um, that's when I kind of started to to feel the pain. But I, it was weird. I could, I was like moving my, uh, my ankle and like my knee felt okay. And then like all of a sudden, like I just had like the, the tightest pain, like you could ever imagine from like, from like my knee up, like right in my like quad, like it was like the tightest squeezing like thing you could yeah, ever yeah because of the compression because of. of the blood rushing there right yeah like it was it was pretty rough did, yeah like right away when you got there did they have to open it up to 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 kind of relieve that pressure because sometimes when you see guys who suffer those femur injuries they have like a big massive scar yeah um yeah so they like stretched me back and they started to take my gear off and then 
uh, they did like a uh, x-ray or whatever in the back and they're like, yeah, it's, it's femur and the x-ray was uh, pretty rough. And um, I think what they said was they had to like get my leg like in traction. So it like doesn't uh, get worse or like from like just like rolling out in the car or in the ambulance. So that was pretty painful just because you were basically like lifting my leg and like getting it in a certain position, you know? Um, so, so that was, that was pretty rough. Yeah. And then went to the, to the ambulance and, uh, obviously I was a little out there, but like every single bump or anything on the road, like just, just killed me. Like I remember sitting in the ambulance with my mom and, uh, she's like, oh my God, like just want to be there already. And, um, it was basically straight into, straight into surgery, but that whole time from like, wow. From like the ambulance to like the actual surgery, like I was in pretty good amount of pain, like the whole entire time. Were, were you thinking, uh, and may, maybe this was kind of after you woke up from surgery, but was there a time when you really kind of worried about your career? Like, am I going to, like, were you asking the doctors, like, am I going to be a- able to play again and stuff like that? Or was it more right away you were kind of positive, like, I'm going to get back, I'm going to be fine? Yeah. Um, it was one of our doctors was in there when they gave me the x-ray and, um, he saw it. And then, um, I started, I was like, you know, will I be able to play again? And he's like, yeah, you're going to be good. And, um, he's like, you, you broke your femur, but you're going to be all right. And then ever since I, you know, heard that, I was like, all right, like, I'm good. Like, you know, this happened, but you know, there's better days ahead. And, um, you know, it was just right into the, to the rehab process after that. What's, what's that like? I mean, from, from surgery to like right away, are they having you try to move it just because they, you, like you talked about the traction earlier, do they, they probably want it moving right away, right? Yeah. So there's no cast or anything. It was just, uh, just my leg. And I think, um, it was either the second or the third day, uh, they were like, all right, we're going to like stand you up. And obviously I'd like the walker and like, so you can like wait there like right away. So I tried that, like, I think the second or third day and I was actually like walking a little bit and getting somewhere. Um, and then it was right back into, into the hospital bed. But, um, yeah, it was first, I don't know, month and or month or two were pretty rough where my mom was living with me and I couldn't do anything on my own clothes. Anything. I needed help to, to stand up or, or do anything like that. So I was basically just laying in bed for, you know, a while and doing some rehab stuff like early on too, just like, you know, raising my leg and stuff that was, was pretty painful and tough to go through. So there's a steel rod in there. Yeah. Yeah. Does that ever come out or does it stay there forever? No, it stays there forever. And they actually said like, it'll be stronger than my other one. So yeah, I have no issues with it today. I can't even tell that, that I have it in there. That's what I wanted to ask Clayton. After you healed, did you feel stronger? Like you, you might have even been better than before they you broke your leg there. Yeah, maybe not right away, but um, like now I definitely do. Like I, I feel you know so much better. But um, it, it definitely did take a while. Just the weirdest thing for me was like the the walking part. Like it just took me like I don't know. I think it was like my mom said like four months um, until I was walking like basically without a limp like i was skating around the same time but like obviously the skating was somehow better than my walk so it was just kind of annoying like i always said um you know i'd wake up every morning and be like all right like i'm not gonna limp today and then it would just like keep on happening and happening and um so that was a little annoying but eventually it slowly slowly just went away so um they did a really cool thing because you were up for the masterton at uh, at the nhl awards this year and it was dr john tokish am i saying that right yeah yeah and they did a really cool feature on each of the doctors who helped out each individual who were up for the award was it him who recommended the pilates because i read that the, the pilates is what really helped you get back as well yeah uh no it wasn't him it was kind of uh everyone that you know, kind of helps me or, or treats me. Um, and it was, uh, a guy, uh, Mark Lindsay was someone who helped out early on and he's uh, a legend he in that a, stuff. He set me up with, um, this girl, uh, Lisa in Toronto. Um, and we kind of did zooms, you know, three times a week, like the whole entire summer, just slow and 
hard, you know, hard to do. And, um, I think that helped me like tremendously. What, like what, like Pilates. So you're on that reformer machine. So you had to buy one of those and get it sent to your house. It actually wasn't, uh, on a reformer at all. It was more like, just like body weight. Like I had like the, the zoom set up, like, um, in my, in my gym and, um, would just like tilt the camera and then just everything would be on the mat or like standing up. It's, it's like, a, I don't know. She always said it's not like Pilates on the reformer, you know, it's a little different. It sounds like Pilates, not on a reformer is yoga. No, no, you're, no. You're, 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 you're probably holding, you're probably holding your leg out and like working all those little muscles, right? Yeah. It's, it's more like so than stretching. stuff to, uh, to like even explain, like just can you demonstrate like for us? Can you demonstrate uh, for us? Kels, I mean, when we first right brought now. up yoga, when we first brought up yoga on this show, Ari's response was, "Isn't there a wicked lot of farting in there?" <laughs> That's what he thought yoga was. <laughs> he was just dropping bombs, <laughs> just <laughs> farting in each other's faces, yeah. giving each other pink eye. <laughs> no, 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 it, yeah, but it's like just like a lot of core, um, and it was just like normal stuff like just strengthening my leg like you know on you know some lunges you know stuff on like you know uh, a thing on the, the ground that kind of like slides like one of those slider things like a lot of stuff with that um and also like the team i was doing stuff with them and i was doing stuff with her on zoom and also doing stuff you know at night to you know kind of like stretch and um you know recover i guess how how much like uh, this might be a rude question how much does it cost you think to kind of get your whole team together from i believe you have a um a cook who c- takes care of all your meals you just mentioned that other guy's name Did you say mark Lindsay? yeah he doesn't treat me as much but um he kind of set me up on you know a good path and then ellen spacusa in boston who with knows um has been you know my my person for you know since I was at BU, I had a small injury and, um, she got me back so fast and, um, we've always had a great relationship and it's crazy every time, like she treats me how good I feel on the ice. And, um, when she comes to town, I always usually play well or you legit score, score or every time she told me I've heard all yeah. Kel. I heard about when he was in Austin's house and now Kel's apparently biz. If you want to see a house to build, built an absolute palace for himself oh in arizona yeah he's yes. got a, don't you have a golf yes. hole on it a, a par yeah. three you do yeah like a little like uh chipping area yeah it's 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 pretty nice Can Whit yeah. come work on his putting there <laughs> for sure no, i'm putting money now Viz. I'm putting <laughs> are you money. are oh I'm fucking right cash. I've been okay cutting, I'm putting cash. it's the only thing i've been doing good for a month just rolling it so then you have so you have that lady who's what doing like art massage on you yeah yeah and, and, and what, other, real biz. what other yeah. type of coaches Best do you I've have? Seen. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, she's worked on the, she worked on the Patriots for years. And like one time she ruptured her entire thumb and they put a metal rod in it. Same as uh, Kels's leg. And now this thumb, dude, she just puts it in pressure spots. This thing can't be injured. It's Up like your Iron Man's well, yeah. thumb. And yeah, like, that's incredible in those spots, you know, biz. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Like on the oh, side of the hips, you know, the, there, you right? Know, the psoas and the, yeah, the, the glute, the QL, the QL, the yeah. oh, L- LS five seven, getting a nice QL rub, LS five seven five hole. Um, <laughs> any other, any other? I mean, I, I we mentioned the ping pong coach already. He's probably on the the, the payroll. But what, what, what? Anything else? Like, is there any other coaches that you have who help you get ready for for an NHL hockey season? Yeah, I mean, I have uh, a mental coach who I started working with after. Second or third year, Darb. Um, who's that? Is it Darb? Dar, or no. Dar? 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 Yeah, yeah. So she's. Uh, I started working with her like after, yeah, after my second year, and um, she's just been amazing and someone who's really helped me as well. Um, I don't know. For me, I think it's just nice to uh, to have someone out on the team and you know someone to uh, talk through you know different things and um, you know I was I'm still super young, but I was looking back at it you know i was so young when i first came in like it was nice to you know just have um you know another person helping me out and um she's like family at this point she was one of the you know she made sacrifices after my injury to to come help out you know my mom had to leave and um you know she's just someone that's you know gone over the top for me for sure 
So I actually, when I was in Gaza, she was there. She was do, doing a book signing, and I met yeah, her. And, yeah, and, she uh, her new book. Yeah, in, interesting story. Like I, I think she was in Nashville living, and then she was hired by the yeah. the Phoenix Suns to come work for the whole team. And then now she obviously works locally. I'm pretty sure she still works for the Suns to some degree. So, like, what does she help out with? Like, what, like, what would be like an example of like how she works with you? Um, I don't know. I like, like I said, the having someone to talk to is like one thing, but just going over, um, you know, different stuff mentally, like you know, stuff that that I'd struggle with before. Or, you know, just I felt like early on, like I would get, you know, so I was so hard on myself. And, you know, when things weren't going my way, I would almost like shut down. Whereas like now it's like, you know, when things don't go my way, I'm like more eager to, you know, stay with it and like find a way to, to get it done. Just like different exercises, um, going through that. And, you know, obviously, you know, just talking, going over different athletes and, um, you know, the adversity they faced or, you know, things that, that they've done to, to help them be successful. And I think that's something that, you know, that I've found that's, that's really helped as well. That's Does remarkable. she have you get into the meditation? Uh, we've done some breathing stuff. Yeah. Um, I've, I've done it a couple of times, but yeah. I, I do it more. I think that's what everyone says about meditation. Oh, I did it once. I got to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Never do it. <laughs> like, shit. I'm not done. But Kels, I, I just, I, I find it fascinating and, it, and it's a testament to your, your dedication to your craft, buddy, because it seems like you just keep trying to find ways to bring your game to the next level. And, and, um, uh, it's an amazing story. I, I'm, I'm so fired up for you that you were able to come back and do what you did last season after sustaining that injury. And, um, I, I, I don't really have much else to ask him boys. Um, did you, but, uh, uh did, were you, you part of, uh, calling Logan Cooley to get him to sign? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. And actually works out that you know we have the same age and um, oh I didn't even know that yeah so we t- we talked a little bit um and then I actually just skated him with him last week um up in Minnesota so um it's definitely great to, to have him kid's gonna be pretty sick huh yeah he's he looks unreal so that's great it's great for you guys uh, I know that the arena vote got struck down, but uh, today news come out that the owners uh, are going to try to sign out a letter of intent to purchase some other land. I want to ask the players on the other team trip. You guys, I know it's obviously the play, not the players' fault, but did they give you guys shit because of the arena you're playing in, even though it's not on you guys? Uh, maybe every now and then, uh, someone will say, you know, chirp some someone about that, but. I mean, it's sure. like, what do you, what do you, what do you ask? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, but, just build one, know, build like, one in your backyard next to your par three course. <laughs> Fuck. Come on. Like, they like, fucking paying you enough. In your backyard. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, I got a pickleball court going in. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, you fight up for, uh, for Australia. You guys are playing an exhibition game there, right? Yeah. We're playing uh, two exhibition games. Yeah. That should be an amazing trip. We actually went over, you know, kind of the schedule today about, you know, what we're doing and, and things like that. So we're actually playing that uh, Royal Melbourne uh, golf Are course you? over there. So yeah, I, so. I, I, I've I've heard that like the 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 I don't know the area it's called like the Sun Belt. I don't know Sand Belt. It's like the best golf you could ever play. So yeah. that's gonna be pretty sick for you guys. When yeah. when do you guys go over? Like mid September? Um, yeah, I think we're going over uh, five days uh, early before training camp. Uh, I, th- I think the. 19th there's or actually maybe the 16th right around there um so we're going a little bit early and then i think we're spending nine days there wow, i might nice. be i might be coming on the plane with you guys i might be going oh, yeah. six, i think it's the 16th to the 24th i'm seeing yeah, it i got one i got such a hectic schedule during the whole regular season it might be a tough way to start with the jet lag but yeah i'd, I'd imagine it'd be a fun trip to we'll be hearing there. from biz about that trip come playoffs like next april <laughs> like i'm still gassed from that australia trip <laughs> still talking uh, about it I, I got one last one i know we were talking about weddings earlier there's been it seems like half the nhl has gotten married this summer but uh do guys ever get uh invites to the two weddings on the same day has, has that happened to any of you guys do they have to like decide who's uh, wedding no but a bunch to? of guys at kevin hayes's were going to mcavoy's the next night Oh, uh, yeah. God. yeah. No, uh, I was actually, um, uh, McAvoy and, uh, Garland's were on the same day and, um, I was Garland's best man. So I was, I wasn't able to go to McAvoy's, but, um, yeah, they were on the same day. Hazy's looked wow. like a frat party for Christ's sake. Well, yeah, yeah, I saw that. that uh, there's, been some, <laughs> there's been some, there's been some, was that Sammy they, Adams? Fresh parties wish they were like this. Was that actually Sammy Adams at the wedding? I don't know. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. 
He came, well, bo- like they had the band, but Sammy Adams is buddies with Hazy, and he came and he played his two bangers. Me and Grinelli talked about this the other night. How about that picture um, of Wit? You didn't get the invite, eh, Biz? I don't, oh, you know what? I got invited to Tyson Berry's, but I, I just the, the season had just ended, and I, I, I didn't really feel like traveling, and it was just a lot going on, and uh, I very much regret it because it looked like one of the best weddings of all time. Did you so. send a gift? Uh, I will be seeing them in Victoria <laughs> next week, and I'll probably just bring them out to eat. Are you supposed to send a gift if you don't go to a wedding? Yeah, it's kind yeah. of a scam, I think. Like, oh, we invited yeah. you to our wedding. I, I, I think this is like an old thing you do. I'm like, all right, well, I can't go. I have to send you. Like, I would just invite everyone if you really wanted, knowing that most people won't go if they're going to send you a Cha-ching. gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although they know Biz is gonna like oh. get him an Outback gift card. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah, bring him to Pita Pit. <laughs> I got my punch like, card yeah. filled out. I can <laughs> here, <laughs> tap ten one. <laughs> wait, you wait. You look like you're a boogie with the saxophone guy there. Uh, getting oh, down I was on the jamming with the sax guy. Yeah. Talking about this yeah, the other night. I was ripping it, but it was a blast. It was a great time. Hey, we gotta get a we gotta get a sandbagger eventually. Ooh, who do you want? Hey, get Phil. Get Phil. <clears throat> oh. Okay, I'll ask who, Phil. If if not Phil, who's your who's your partner? Uh, doesn't matter. I can ask like Schmaltzy or that. Uh, you're you're or both too good. good. Get Fish. Uh, get Christian Fisher. He's he's probably worse enough. He's pretty he's, good. He's probably he's what like, a five like or a, six. He's like a one. He's oh, like a really? Fishes? And he was the fourth yeah, ranked on the thing. Holy fuck. Yeah, What's so. Phil's he, handicap? He's like a one or two. Make playoffs for we, once, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. Um, I think Phil's like a three, but like I said, he's, he's he can okay. shoot like two under, two under on a on a nine easily, and then he can shoot 43. So he kind of, you know, balances out. I don't know. They're they're very, very close. All right. Well, All right. we'll put you in Let's line. Let's make it happen. Yeah. Sounds good. Kels, this was great, pal. Appreciate you making time yeah. for us. And uh, best Thank of luck you. next season, my man. Thank you. Thanks for Don't having me. Those are dogs. Oh, 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 absolutely. Oh. All right, guys. Before we go any farther, it's time to talk about our good friends at G4, but we're not talking about these beauties. It's time for a little shoe spotlight. Each month, we like to share our favorite golf shoes from G4. And like I said, we're not talking about my beauties right here. This month, we're talking about the MG4X2 Golf cross trainer and let me tell you why this shoe is superior to all other typical golf shoes this multifunctional shoe is in line with the casual golfer vibe which as you guys you you guys know if you've ever seen a sandbagger that is very very big to the spit and chicklets crew it has to be good vibes it has next level traction for a sure fire swing and and it is suitable for the streets as everyday wear it's incredibly breathable too making it great for the summertime. For real, this is going to be your all-purpose, any activity shoe all summer long. Check out g4.com slash chicklets for 10% off your first order. Again, check out g4.com slash chicklets for 10% off your first order. I got G4s. I use them on the course every day when I'm taking my mulligans. You should use G4s too. This time we're talking about the MG4X2 Golf Cross Trainers, and you can learn more about those at G4.com. You throw in the slash chicklets, you get 10% off your first order. Huge thanks to Clayton Keller for jumping all of us, man. Awesome kid, man. We were so happy he had a nice season last year after the horrific injury he suffered. So thanks, Clayton, for coming on. Hopefully we'll catch up with you again later, but... Hey, G, I, I understand there's a big sale uh, today and tomorrow on uh, Boston Sports merch. What's going on here? Yeah, so the entire chiclet store in both U.S. and Canada is 20% off for the next two days. So that's August 15th and 16th this week, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. Everything is off. So I'm, I'm talking hats. We got tons of big deal brewing hats, spitting chiclets hats. We got golf merch. We got T-shirts. We got everything you could imagine, and it's all 20% off barstoolsports.com slash chicklets Tuesday, Wednesday this week. We're not owned by Penn anymore, guys. We don't have that gambling money funneling through. Buy the t-shirts. I need a place to sleep tonight, boys. The Prez already taken care of the people. 20% off. What a guy. Unbelievable. Barstool's back, baby. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, 
We got a new segment here. Well, it's an old segment, but it's new because it's sponsored. We'll grind my gears, Action G. It's going to be brought to you by Big Deal Brew. Uh, I got to find something to get pissed off at every week. That should be too hard for me. Uh, you know what's grinding my gears lately is what your boy Elon has done to Twitter, man. I know he bitched about it a lot. It's crazy how he bought this company and just choked it out, basically. Like, just started with the, the use of it, like that whole for you thing. Like, it, it basically hijacks your feed, follows people you don't want to follow. Uh, the bots, way worse than ever. I'm getting bots everywhere. I'm sure you guys probably get them a lot. Hardcore porn. Every time you hit a hashtag, there's dicks and balls all over the place. I normally don't complain about porn, but when you click on a hashtag, man, if you're at work, you shouldn't expect like a DP going on or someone getting fisted. It's like, well, how, how is this happening? It's insane. Uh, shadow banning, another one that I hear about people having. That, that pop, their tweets don't pop up. You notice, G, maybe that like people you followed, you just don't happen to see their tweets anymore. Have you noticed that at all? People are like, oh my God, I haven't seen a tweet from them for a while. Uh, I don't. I, okay. I, I'm one person who like, I... Twitter's just the same to me. I'm I'm sure I know a lot of people say it sucks now, but to me it's it's no different. I just swipe over to the following tab and I use it as I always have. All right. Uh I mean the other thing too, just the, like absolute dregs of the internet. I mean, there's always shitheads on there who say dumb things, but I swear to God, it's five hundred times worse, man. Just you know, I like to go down random threads and look at comments, just you know, check out people's opinions. And just like the like blatant racist shit, it's it was never to this extent. I know oh the whole free speech thing, he was beating that drum, but it's like it's just vile shit that doesn't get policed anymore. He's you know he lets all these idiots on who were already kicked off before. I know it's his company and all, but like fucking when people like siding with fucking the Nazi fucking uh, mentality. Maybe not let him on fucking Twitter, man. It doesn't have to be the fucking town square that allows fucking Nazi type thinking. That's another one. Also the check mark, right? He made that irrelevant. I know everyone's all blue check but check mark brigade way back in the day, but. It was useful. It was, I think a lot of people that had the check mark weren't like, quote unquote, woke, liberal, whatever. They just, it was a way to say, oh, this person is an expert in this field, or this is definitely that person. And you know, you could go to them and that, you know, there's some validity to it. But now it's just like a check mark of some dork whose bio says like, oh, philosopher, men's rights activist, uh, deep thinker. They pay eight bucks a month for it. It's like, it just fucked that whole thing up. It like switched it around. And I honestly, part of me wonders like, is this like, is he trying to fucking torpedo this thing on purpose? I mean, look who, look who bankrolled most of that $44 million. I don't know. Sounds like people might want to shut a lot of people up around the world. I don't know, man. I think the fucking user experience has been a lot worse since he's taken over. And one other thing, G, I stopped counting my followers after 300. When I got Twitter 12 years ago, Danny Picard told me to get it. I had no desire to get social media, but it was a great news aggregator. And I said, ah, if I get 300, 400 followers, I'll be psyched. You know, obviously, chicklets come along a, a little few years later. You know, I don't click on the number, but, you, you know, it's slow, steady, slow, steady. It, it kept going up and up and up. And then not long after he uh, took over, it's kind of plateaued at like 183, which is kind of weird. I mean, I, I don't say anything where I'm going to have like en mass fucking people dropping. And I wonder if it's because I've had him blocked for years. Like even before he <laughs> bought Twitter, I just I'm sick of listening to this guy. I just blocked him. So I wonder if he has his little minions like, oh, who has me blocked? Like fuck with them in some way. Because it is weird, dude. For 13 years, incrementally slower up followers, uh, slow up my followers. And now it's like I'm locked in or plateaued. I, I actually went backwards a little bit. So very, very fishy to me that the guy's blocked. You think Elon's like brought you up in a meeting already, being no. like, this motherfucker keeps ripping me on his podcast every week on Twitter. He says he could kick my ass in jeopardy, suppress his that. tweets, bring his followers down. Fuck RA. Dude, I, I, I'm curious. I'd like an explanation. I mean, again, I'm sure, not me. I'm sure anybody who hasn't blocked, I mean, he's, he's obviously petty. He, he's fucking kind of a little wine bag about things. Like, anyone who has me blocked, then I don't know what they do with the configuration is, but. After, uh, what, 13 years, and then it, he buys it, and all of a sudden it plateaus. Very fucking fishy. So, yeah. Hell, yeah, hell, 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 hell. Elon Musk, Twitter, grinding my gears this week, big time. Brought to you by Big Deal Brew. It's not just for hockey season anymore. So, Merle, what are your else? thoughts? You didn't let him jump in yeah, at all. Yeah, my, my only yeah. problem is is the, the color, the black button now on my phone. Like, I was so used to you see that blue and you click it, so that's screwing me up a little bit. And to go back to your point a little bit on the... Sometimes I won't see them when I'm scrolling through following and then somehow I end up on for you by mistake on that side and I'll see those tweets and I'm like, wait, I never saw that one. So that there is something a little fishy there. But um, like, you, like you guys said, I'm not huge into this. I don't know ex everything. I'm happy with it, but except for the color, if he just kept the X color, that blue, then I'd be fine. But the black is messing with me still. Yeah, all, the whole name change. It's like, I, why did, I mean, you had a, a great brand tweet. Like, a tweet became a friggin' verb everybody used, and then you, you junk that. And if I X, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I'm still here. People, oh, why are you complaining? You still want it? It's like, 
buddy, I can complain about it and still be on it. There's no no losses. I can't be on it. It's still useful in a lot of ways, but it's a, it's a lot greasier than it was before he bought it. You don't agree? Oh, well, what are you going to do? All right, boys. Uh, any other Twitter thoughts before we send along to our second interview of the show? All right, our next guest, I believe this is his second appearance, Chief, I, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Great guy here from Massachusetts, defenseman Hal Gill, Stanley Cup winner, played a long time in the NHL. Nice character. We met him down in Nashville once again. So uh, without any further ado, enjoy Hal Gill. All right, guys, before we go any farther, I got to talk to you about our great friends at Peter Millar. As crazy as it may sound, fall is already on the horizon, which means the hot summer temperatures will quickly be turning into cool mornings and evenings. That's why our great friends at Peter Millar have created the incredible Perth Performance Quarter Zip, a perfect layer for the changing seasons. This is the best selling pullover. It features course ready benefits like the four way stretch, moisture wicking fabric, and easy care in a classic design. Perfect, perfect for transitional weather. As the official outfitter of the USGA, Peter Millar does know a thing or two about high quality performance. Whether you're heading to town or layering up for the next round, do it in style with the Peter Millar performance pullovers. Head over to petermillar.com to shop their full range of performance pullovers, as well as the entire Peter Millar line. We have Chicklets Peter Millar gear. I'm wearing a Chicklets polo. I got the quarter zip. It doesn't get any better than that. And as you'll see in every sandbagger, the boys are decked out head to toe in Peter Millar. They're the goat. Head over to petermillar.com to shop their full range of performance pullovers, as well as the entire Peter Millar line. Check it out right now. It's our pleasure to welcome this guy back for his third appearance on the show. After 16 NHL seasons, over 1,200 regular season and playoff games, and of course, a Stanley Cup, this defenseman moved to the booth afterwards, and he just finished his sixth season as a Preds analyst here in Smashville. Thanks so much for joining us on the Spittin' Chicklets podcast once again, our pal Hal Gill. How's Bang it going, my man? Wow. Good. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Third appearance. That's how I, I was. I was doing. The, I did this. You weren't even. Yeah. Doing it right, Biz. You were out. Episode was, eighteen was your first. Yeah. One. Oh my. That's yeah. way. I 20, don't even know if you guys were associated with Barstool then. Uh, oh yeah, we were at that point. Oh, okay. Yeah. February well, seventeen the and then yeah. August uh, twenty twenty. Yeah. So this is your third time. Yeah. So, so uh, thanks first, for having me and, and uh, welcome to Smashville. It's the first oh. hat trick he's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Coming out of the cage. Going right at it. <laughs> going right at it. <laughs> the way that the way that Army tripped my leg skills. He's a dude. He could take it. He's not guy you won that fight <laughs> apparently you, you, got, you, you would have thought you were teammates in pittsburgh but you guys just missed each other yeah we did just yeah unfortunately yeah i wish i could have played with you i know but i came in there and everyone was like oh you got to meet this you got to meet hal gill you got to meet this guy and then i i did meet him i met him the one night we were there and he, he said oh the guys were saying like oh you, you got to meet army you got to meet army yeah. so yeah we just missed each other but and then we uh, crash it. We crash weddings together, yeah. uh, like all mutual <laughs> friends, and just act like absolute clowns. Yeah, we're we've those had some guys. Good times. We've had some good times yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Do you stay down here all year round, Hill, or do you go home for the? Summer? I go back up to Boston a little bit. Yeah, uh, this has been a different summer because you know the draft and everything. I run a camp down here. Just okay. finished that up last week, but I'll go back up to Boston. I swindled my way into doing a camp in Nantucket. Yeah. Oh, which is, oh, there you go. So, the Yandles? so I got to be there. Yeah. I know they're competing with me. Oh, Yandles man. are coming in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. So it, yeah, I go back up, see family. It's, it's hot here, man. Oh, it's brutal. I yeah. mean, today is, is a scorcher. Yeah. Just, as far as humidity, you, but, have to but, but, swim, you have to swim down the street. You know? <laughs> but o- overall, like, I mean, what a decision to take that job. We were just talking before, um, before we started hitting record, though, this city has just popped off in the last six years. I feel like since COVID, it's like doubled in size. No, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's it's um, you know the property has gone way up. Their businesses are moving in. It's changed that the really that dynamic has changed. Like COVID happened, and everyone was like, "We're coming." New York and California just dumped on us. Um, so it's changed the dynamic of the city, but. Uh, it's still it, great restaurants now. Like when I was playing here, it was like, like on the road, you, where you go to Nashville, you go to Tootsie's for, no, you'd go to, you'd go to Jack's. There's like a go, steakhouse go to out of town. Palm. You the go Palms. to Palm. Yeah. yeah. It was like, there was like three, four restaurants. Now it's, it's blown out. So yeah. it's, it's, it's fun being here and it's still, I love that Broadway hasn't really changed. Right. It's the same. Yeah. 
honky tonks just like tearing it up and other than more yeah. bars popping up uh, i gotta get back to a story that army told me about i don't think we've talked about this on the on the two first podcasts we've had you on when you got called into the room for Tarion one of these times oh and, he wanted to throw that right on the gate on skillsy <laughs> it's a great story it's, inc- though. it's incredible the first when you told me it, i'm like that's the first thing i'm gonna ask him about yeah. uh when Tarion was lying face down when you walked in the room yeah the trainer trainer came up and said uh Tarion wants you He's in his office and I'm like, <laughs> I get in there and he's on his knees behind the, by the desk <laughs> in his office. And I go, are you okay? You okay? Like, you want me to go get the trainer? He goes, I can't move. And I go, oh, <laughs> let me go get the trainer. He goes, no, 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 no. I, I can't, I can't move cause I'm on my knees. And I said, I, I, I'm going to go get the trainer. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. And he goes, and I look up and on the TV, there's a there's a video stopped of me in front of the net on my knees <laughs> trying to block a shot and he goes you can't move either he goes stop going down on on your knees to block shots and i'm like i that, i always thought that was like courageous and like that was like coaches <laughs> yeah. love that right and he's that like, was your mo too like yeah. most of the time well, the you're on your stomach is like, I was like, okay, I, I guess I won't. And and he benched me anyway. He sat me for 10 games until he got fired. Um, but it, I go to Montreal and then, uh, you know, I go out in bars in Montreal and and people will come up to me and, and lie down and sprawl across. Look at, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm Al Gill. Like that was my thing, right? Yeah, like, you're the slide the dance guy. Floor. Yeah, I was Just like, well, no, dude, you don't have to do it. And they love it. You know, like Montreal <laughs> loved it, but Iron Mike didn't like it too much. That's fucking hilarious. You were the slide blo- block king though, like, Six seven, there. You know the the way you played too. Those you, once those shot blockers came in, you had those on. You're just a, a massive body in around that area. So yeah, it's, it's kind nice of weird of saying ugly gear wear. Yeah, he's ugly That's gear a wear nice a little bit. I, one of my favorites is is I was doing. You know, it was a five on three, and I was trying to take away the cross crease pass, right? And I think it was like Timo Solani or something. I was, he's looking at me. And, and he just like stopped and like shook his head. Like, like I was lying down in front of him <laughs> yeah. and I had my one hand up, you know, trying to block the, the pass. And he just stopped and looked at me like, but you're doing the game wrong. Like <laughs> have some integrity, stand up. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was, uh, I was doing whatever I could to stay in the are league. You, are you doing much coaching here in town in Nashville? Like with the, uh, with the minor With program? the little guys. Yeah. With the little guys. Yeah. I, I get out there and, and coach. I, when I retired, I coached high school, um, and so I, you know, I, I try to help out with the, with the little guys. That was before you came down here, right? You yeah. were, you were up in mass coaching. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love coaching it. You know, I found I was coaching Lincoln Sudbury and I loved it. I love those kids. They're a division two level. So they're just, they just love the game. They just want to play and compete and they want to win. But I was, I was getting squirrely. I was watching like three hours of video at night and, you know, I was like, oh, this is, I'm kind of pushing it here. But I want, I, I love coaching. I didn't want to travel. Like I didn't want to do like assistant coach in, in one city in mm-hmm. Iowa and then go to another, try to get a college job. You know, like I just wanted to let my family settle down. So Nashville was, you know, we liked it here. We all loved it here. So the school's good we like being here. And then broadcasting was like, Hey, I, I can do that with the Preds. So it, it worked out well. Well, the, uh, broadcasting led to the bag check is we got to tell this story. How did that all come about? And uh, explain it to the listeners who might not be aware. Yeah. Of it. Uh, so, um, Oh dog, Jeff O'Neill <laughs> it was such a beauty. Um, he had me on, uh, a radio station, my first year doing, doing the, the broadcasting. And he's like, were you the last bag chucker in the NHL? And I was like, ah, geez, I don't know. I think there's still, I'm out there. They're just quiet about it. Right. And I was like, we're, so we're talking about it. And Chris Mason, who I work with and is uh, my bag checking buddy. He's a beauty. Yeah. He, he says, you you were talking about bag checker. What, like, what is, what is a bag checker? And I go, well, you chuck your bags. It's just, it's not a thing. It's just, you know, everyone goes, chucks their bags, lobbying 10. Let's, Get the hell out, you know? Well, like, there's a lot of younger people who listen to our yeah. podcast who don't know back then. It was like, you know, you got to the hotel after yeah. traveling and, and the guys would always meet up for a beer. That's not very common now. Yeah. The game's completely changed. Well, I remember like my first, my first road trip, I was, we went, I was in Boston. We went to Buffalo and they said, Hey, let's chuck and, and go. Like, and <laughs> they were at the Buffalo house. I, I got there like 15 minutes and the whole team was there. 
with like buckets of wings and a whole table full of, of beers. You know, it was like, that's just what everyone did. Um, so anyway, that was part of my life. Like I, I didn't want to go into my room. It's depressing getting into a room, Very especially depressing. like when there's no roommates, like when you yeah. had a roommate, you could mess around, do something stupid, but then you didn't have roommates. And so I was always out. Um, and then, so we were talking about it and Mace was like, Oh, we got to take a video of you checking your bag. And we we're in Montreal. So we did that video and was put it online. And, and uh, you know, then we just started going with it. Um, the fun part is Chris Mason was like, dude, let's sell shirts and raise some money. And so we're raising money for a veterans hockey group, seven element. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so we have some, we have some swag for you guys. You can that's all, yeah. pass around. Like, and your you videos know. were popping off. You had Mace yeah, and like was, all the different it, places. It was yeah, crazy it just, how, how it caught on. And we just were doing stupid. Mace is like a genius. Like he, yeah. he comes up with ideas and he's like, hey, just do this and do that. And I'm skit like, guy. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's a skit guy. He's, he's does a videos. huge skit guy. And so we go around and just... Yeah, we're idiots. Having How about that collective bargaining agreement? You don't get roommates, and but then you got to pay twenty percent escrow. You're yeah. like, how the fuck did? Can I at least keep my roommate <laughs> yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. Like, can I? I'm, well, you I'm know, bored what, on my one mind. Of my favorite, <laughs> Brian McCabe and Darcy Tucker still room together, even though they could have gotten their own room. I always thought that was kind of bizarre. It's like, lonely though, a little bit. It's after, it's awful. Yeah, I didn't like I, it either. It's awful, but. You're not going to say I don't want my no, own yeah. room. You're grown ass mad. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's going right? to be a little, a little awkward. <laughs> what, like, hey, coach, it? you might have fit. You know, what, 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 like, and he's like, oh, what? Ten years or six? What is it? Ten years or six hundred games? Yeah, yeah. That was the cutoff. Used to be. Used now to it's be. just entry level contracts, right? Yeah. But I thought that was great. Like having. You know, I got, those are some of the best stories of roommate stories. I used to sleep on a cot in, uh, in, in Yans and Fiddler's room for crying out loud. I love being in the mix. We used yeah. to get the Sundays late night. Yeah, it was a, it was a great Biz time. didn't even play and they get him. You go in the shower with the boys yeah. after the game. Yeah. <laughs> three, three in the morning, you hear beds, business caught squeaking like Biz, knock it off, will you? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm tugging one. I'm putting one in my belly button here. Can't uh, fall asleep. Um, you weren't the, you were the last bag chucker in the league, I think. That's was on the last episode, but they also talked about you being the last guy with a six pack of beer in your stall. You know, I did my homework. We, to listen to this. We, but yeah. is that something you learned from Ray Bork, your rookie year? I know he was one of those guys, six yeah, pack Ray in the was, stall. Was least. he really? Oh yeah, Ray Bork was. That was uh, we played three overtime game in Carolina. Anson Carter diving. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 yeah Ninety eight. Right? It was like a long ass. Game. It was forever. And, and Jason Allison was over there. He played like thirty five minutes or something. And he's got an IV. Ray Bork. We're sitting on the bus, and Ray played. I think it's like 60 minutes, 50 something minutes. And he's sitting there just crushing beers, just going, when are we going to get out of here? <laughs> like he was, yeah, it was, but that was, I, I think that was everyone. Everyone would go back there. Yeah. But like and, I, that, and I always yeah. had the beer guy, like Dan Bilesma, when he took the job in Pittsburgh, he, he walks to the back and I'm sitting, I've got all the beers like tucked in my, my corner. And he goes, your carry on. Cause that's all he, you would bring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically. And he goes, uh, you know, we're on the bus and he goes, he goes, who's the beer guy? And I'm like, time to face the music. I'm like, I'm the beer guy. And he's like, can I get two? I was like, oh, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, I like this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, I'll go he to goes, Warfield. I was the beer guy too. And he gave me back to committing block I was like, shots I, on my I knees. I want to play this. I want to play for this guy. <laughs> How did that work, Skillsy? Because I don't know, because I wasn't the beer guy, but every time we got on the bus leaving a rank, there's like a a crate with a garbage bag with yeah. ice in there, like the makeshift uh, cooler. How how did that how did you do that? How did you just set up with the trainers? Like, what was the... Uh, yeah, you'd just go to the trainer and, and be like, hey, you got me? And the, they knew. They knew. Well, how many you need? How many... Depending on... Like, if we were flying home, we'd just get a case in the back and we'll yeah. pass around a couple. If we're going to another city, it's yeah. like, whew, load them up. Like, yeah. how many <laughs> can we get in there? If you're going to yeah. Edmonton or Colorado airport, you need about three cases. Yeah. yeah. 45 yeah, exactly. out of town. Yeah. Um, obviously... But you know what my favorite is? This is my, Matt Sundin, who's like... I, I, I love this guy. He's the best. Right. And he's, so he gets on the, we got the snot kicked out of us. we get killed and we get on the bus and he's like, it's not, it's not bad enough that we got shit kicked and we suck. And I get on the, the bus and my freaking beer is warm. He, he lost his mind. I started dying laughing. He's yelling at the coaches and everyone <laughs> and in the front of off. the bus. Like he was pissed off because the beer was warm. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's like, the one who ended up hooking us up in Sweden when we went over there to yeah, start the right. off with the premiere games. So I'm forever indebted to, to yeah. uh, Sundin for sure. Especially yeah, that after was what, touch with and what go I brought home. That was touch and go for a while, right? That was a that that, that, that was a good time. I'd never been overseas <laughs> like that, and uh, and you guys took care of us. But uh, shifting towards uh, the Preds, I mean, six years now, uh, some ups and downs with the team. But like, what 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 did you make of last season? But now you you got a coaching change and and a little bit of chaos, I would say. Yeah, well, last year was a mess. We were supposed to, Preds were supposed to be good, like they were a good team. Like, and we got McDonough, we got Niederreiter, and we like everything's going to click. And then for whatever reason, it just, you know, this career years that guys had before, you know, like Forsberg, Duchesne, Johansson, like they just it dropped off a cliff. And um, so then, you know, the, everything changes and you know, Trotz comes in and pulls the trigger quick. Like guys were moving. And then you look at it now, it's like, it's pretty impressive. The haul that the Preds got. Oh, for like, sure. Like this draft coming up is going to be insane. You know, like. Like all these, all these draft, 13 draft picks, they squeezed out, they cleared cap space. They can turn this around quick. And, um, we saw all the young guys play. Like it was kind of fun. If you watch, I know everyone's like, well, they're out and we're not going to watch, but you know, Tommy Novak, Cody glass, all these kids came out to play event. Luke Evangelista is out there yeah. buzzing. Just like he played good. Yeah. They're just yeah. A fun. They're just fun group of guys. And so I, I think. You know, we'll see how long it takes for them to turn around. Johansson gone now. It's like there's going to be some new blood in that. You know, but you, you lost some leaders, um, but you got some young guys that are coming up. And you still have Saros, Yossi, McDonough. Like, they, they're going to be good just because of that. Yeah, and I think Andrew Burnett's going to be great for you guys because yeah. I, I've talked to a lot of agents. A lot of players want to play for him. They love his offensive game and stuff. So, like you said, you got the cap space. I think you're going to see some free agents that obviously will play here. The wives will all agree to come here. So you won't see what's happening in these other cities in Nashville. Do you, do you feel like it was, uh, it, Hines was maybe a little bit too defensive minded? Like, why do you think they ended up I don't, shifting? I, I, like, uh, it, they all had a great year the year before. I don't, so I don't know. You know, I, I do think Hines, you know, you have to work, you have to play the right way. He, he demanded a lot. Um, you know, he had the, he had the hard conversations. So I, I don't know. I, 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 whatever, whatever happened, it just, the message wasn't getting through, but he did a great job with the young guys. We, we had a top six that shouldn't even, was a Milwaukee top six and yeah. they were out winning games and almost made it into a playoffs. Pushed, yeah. You guys were pushing. They made a push for the playoffs, which, you know, you give Heinz credit for that. Like he, he found it and, you know, chicken shit to chicken salad. Yeah. Right? I was thinking with uh, Trotzi, who we saw actually walking down the street, busy and I were catching a bite. Trotzi yeah, he's was built like a fr he's refrigerator. Yeah, he was wh wheeling by. He's pretty jacked. Yeah, he's in good shape. Yeah. He's a good dude. Players Wait, love him. Trotzi? Guys love him. Yeah, Trotzi. Yeah, he's, he's, his shoulder. He's like he's got tank. no neck. Hey, he's just like he's jacked. in the gym on the road. He's on the gym and he's just like I look over there and he's just he's a brick. Just bowling chucking, balls for chucking shoulders. weights. Yeah, yeah, he's just a monster. So he's he's saying though. He came in here, he's telling his scouts, let's hit some home runs, let's take some chances, let's go for it. So you talk about this draft, you talk about young guys, you talk about cap space. Do you expect like him to be fairly aggressive in, you know, starting I, his tenor here? Like he's a pretty reserved, quiet guy, friendly. Well, I, you know, it's kind of, I, I don't know how much he has to lose, right? Yeah. Like he, I, I, th I think he's, if you talk to him, he's really confident that he's going to do all he works extremely hard. He's he's gone through this whole organization and talked to everyone, and so he's he's gone through that. He but he's, um, I think he's going to take chances. I think he's going to be like, and not necessarily to try to win right now, but like, you know, he's gonna he wants to get exciting players. He wants to have the excitement in the game. And I think that's what he's looking for more. When you, when you talk about the approach of talking to everyone, you mean like, even like you, Hey, what are you seeing? What do you think? He's talking. He, he talks to everyone. Like he goes, like we, every player was in the lobby at the end of the year. Like we're going through it. He, he would sit down and for an hour, I'd see them in the lobby. I'd walk out, grab a cup of coffee. I would come back like a half hour later. They're still talking. Um, you know, just getting everyone's, he was, we were at the rink, one of the local rinks, and he's walking around looking at the rinks because they're doing development camp. Like he, he just, he's I a think lifer. he was ready to retire. And then he's like, yeah. okay, I'll go back at it. And he doesn't, he doesn't stop. It's always on. Like on the plane, guys are going up to talk to him. You know, like he just wants to make sure he knows everyone. 
And mostly it's talking shop about what's going on on the ice. What's going on? What's going on? In your well, he's life. a guy. He's a personable guy, though. He wants to know about you, right? Yeah. Like one of my favorite things when I was playing, I got traded from Montreal and Sergei Kostitsin was here. And Sergei Kostitsin was awful in Montreal. He was like, he was a bad teammate. He was a bad person. And I was like, I don't want to be around this guy. I got here and Sergei walks right up to me and he's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I was like, okay, that's not him. You know, we had a conversation and he was playing well here. He played really well in Nashville. And so I went over to Trotsky. I go, what did you do to that guy? And he goes, I had cereal, cereal with him every morning. Show up at the rink and just wait until he'd walk in and get a bowl of cereal and sit next to him and, and, and just talk just to him. opened him up? Just talk to him. That's, that's what Trotsky does. Like he, yeah, he has like a real regular guy vibe about him, you know, for and you don't think you're, trots. you don't think you're talking about your job until all of a sudden you're like, wait, what? You know, yeah. he's like, you know, he's yeah. talking hockey yeah. with you. Oh, by the way, we traded you. Oh, yeah, yeah. fuck. I thought we had yeah. a nice bowl of cereal. Yeah, He has a way about him of doing that. He coached me at world championships and just he's like, it's like he's one of the boys, but he's like the coach. Yeah. So he has like a cool way of getting it's like a skill he has, Yo, I, but sure. I think it's just him. Yeah. I think he's just that kind of guy, right? Just a, just like a lovable, good good guy. Cares yeah, you want to play for him. You want to play for him, yeah. Yeah, yeah hell, you mentioned uh, Yossi, Saros, Forsberg. They got a great core here. Uh, is he could just kind of try to do like a rebuild on the fly here because they don't have to strip it down for pots. I no. mean, they just they just kind of got rid of Johansson. Was that more or just cut and bait, just kind of I think, I think easier than a bio? Trying, trying to change the mojo. Okay. You know, like, Joey was a beast in the playoffs. Like, he did a lot of good things for the Preds. Um, I think I just, you know, carrying 8 million, they're trying to roll things over. They're trying to get new blood in. And he's, you know, you also look at like Cody glass, you so Parson in all these young kids, Tommy Novak that have come out and said, Hey, we want a chance here. I, I think you free up that cap space and you, you move him on, let him go do his thing in Colorado and open up some spots. Mm -hmm. Well, you kind of alluded to it last year, the beginning of the year. Well, the first half was a bit of a shit show, but as they got replacements there and some younger guys, like they were, they were putting in quite an effort towards the end of the season. And when you guys came to Arizona, I, I worked a game and that Cody glass kid stuck out like a sore thumb. He, 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 like he, yeah, he's good. He's good. I, he went through a lot. Eh? Yeah. Vegas, big time. First round pick goes in there. Um, had some injuries, battle back from it. I, I like, I love the kid. First of all, he's like a, he's a good old Canadian boy. Just like, oh, he's, a, he's happy, smiley, you know, like, um, but he's like, he's got an edge to him and he started to find that. Like he, he's got some jam around the net and he was playing that way. He's strong. He's strong, stronger than you would think he would be. And I think that's where once he gets his game going, he's going to go. But there's a lot of guys like that, that are coming around that you so parsing him. Like you have to watch him. He's the one who did through the legs, scored a goal and, to win well, it on OT, just think, like yeah. casual. I think Parson and, 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 and Tulvanen, was it, who were very highly touted. Uh, looking back, like what was not working with him and why'd you guys just get rid of him for nothing? I, you know what? I feel bad for Tulvanen because when he got over you, great shot. They were like, hey, you got to learn the North American game. Like you got to play. He, so he went down to Milwaukee and Tolvi comes back and, he, and he's banging bodies, blocking shots. He's doing... But he like lost his swagger with the puck, you know. Like, I I don't know what swagger is with the puck, and you certainly we, like we like, saw lots of guys. Though. Some some, 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 some anybody in this room knows what that is. <laughs> but like, there, you know, you can see when guys just they feel it, and they're and like he lost that feeling, and um. But he was playing. I love the way he played. Like he's he was good. He's hitting penalty kill, doing whatever he could. He was. He committed him. So he could have gone back to Russia and just scored goals and been like, screw you. I don't need to be here. But he put in the work and then it just didn't work out. And so I, I you know, he had success in Seattle. So hopefully that continues because he's uh, again, I really like he's a good kid. So I feel bad when like when you're outside of it, when you're when you're in the locker room, you end up loving guys. Right. Yeah. And then your other guys you don't care for you, whatever. But when you're broadcasting, I feel like. You like you get a soft spot for a guy, but you don't really know him all yeah. that well. It just so I, I feel like the what I do know of him is like I want that kid to be successful. You know, I want to ask you about that. That's a good segue. Just just from doing what you're doing now, I feel like with your broadcasting crew, like you know the TV and radio side, you guys have like a good social media presence. Like you guys support your team really well. 
that's probably like mandated to try to grow the game a little bit. But is is it is it like community like that? Like you said, you're on the outside, but are you guys around the team a lot, around the room, at a lot of events, I'm sure, together to get to know them? Yeah. Is it more like smaller like where if you were you know say in boston you're like the media it's well, like oh shit yeah yeah well you know in, in nashville like and i always laugh because i was coming from montreal toronto like toronto yeah. you know you go to appearances and you get the velvet rope and you're like hey 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 yeah. and then you you leave like in nashville you go to an appearance and it's like you're gonna sit down with five kids for an hour mm -hmm. and you're just gonna talk to them and that's your appearance and so it's so much more personable here. Um, and so that, you know, we go to a bowling event and well, I'll hang out, have a couple of beers with the guys. Like it, it's, you're mixed in you're, a little bit mixed more in a lot with more. the product. You're, you're the, yeah. you're like a face yeah. of the product a yeah. little bit with what you guys yeah, do here. Like we're, yeah. So yeah, we have a good crew and I think for the most part, you know, being part of the team, you know, we don't want to rip the guys, but yeah. we're also want to be honest, right? Like it, I'm not going to lie. And I did. I, I said something. Who'd about, you get? I Who'd said, you get? <laughs> I said something about Philip Forsberg. Oh, I called, oh, he's a beauty though. I, I love him. I, I played with him. I, yeah. I, so I called him and I said, I said, Hey, this just came out. I said something about you. And he goes, would you say it to my face? And I'm like, well, yeah. And he goes, so don't worry about it. I'm like, well, so you got, you got ahead of it. Like, how did you know that was he, did you hear that he was upset? I just, about it? I just saw, I just saw, you know, I was talking about something. I saw someone, I think it was a tweet or something. Oh, and I then said. they tagged them. And, and it was like, you? I was oh. like, oh, oh, you got snitch tag? Like, well, you know, it's like, we, we all oh, say, like, we all say right. something wrong. I, you're like, ah, some more than others. Well, you get a little critical, like, <laughs> but, you know, and you see the team, like you're oh, over top of that, that product every night. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know what's good and you know what they're supposed to do and you know yeah. how it's supposed to be. Was yeah. it a lazy back check or something? What did he do? No, like, no, it was, no, it was, we were just talking about, I, I was saying he needs to play more of a direct game and, and he's, you know, he's playing at times he plays soft. on the perimeter. He soft. And he's, <laughs> he called him soft. I would you? never call him <laughs> anyone he goes, soft. He's softer than soft. He's shit in the You're microwave. Soft. You're soft. Why are you playing soft? Uh, a 1920s circus. You're a bad teammate. Curly Q mustache. <laughs> You're a bad teammate. Were you the reason soft. he went on that rant, Tarion? The he soft wasn't rant? There. No, oh, I wasn't. I, wasn't there. Oh, okay. I had enough rants. That was, that was all Whitney. So yeah. that was all Whitney's fault. The, the soft rant, yeah. You got any good Whitney that stories now worst. that he's not here you can give us? That was the You don't worst. have to hold back. The other two times the wit was here. Give us some dirt. What do yeah. you got? No, you know what? I, I always loved... Um, I can't tell that one. <laughs> um, no, you know what? Um, wit was like... I, I don't know if he's still... I haven't like hung out with him in a long time, but he was always like so emotional. Like It was like... Some days he just right. I like. It. Is he still like that? Or yeah, he's like, emotional. You remember guy. when he was playing? He like, yeah, but it's funny. He wears it on his sleeve. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like, man, I feel like, oh, terrible right now. Yeah, you know. Like, you say oh, so I feel, I remember unbelievable. We, we were on different teams. He might have been in Anaheim or stretching next to each other, and he's like, "Oh, ruined my whole my Olympic break was ruined. Got to go win the stupid silver." Oh, <laughs> couldn't win the cup. Couldn't win the cup. Got traded, and then I won the silver. Sounds like you. Sounds like me at the casino. You, yeah. like, you poor bastard. I know he's not here, but to be fair, he didn't win Wit shit. Is <laughs> casino girls. Yeah. Wit is hockey version of you in the yeah. casino. Everything's against Unbelievable. me. Unbelievable. Everything Everything against, against me. me. Yeah. No. I. I but uh, I don't know. Biz. I, I don't know. Were you in the lunch group after? After we go after practice and pit, we, I was we, I was only there for about two months. But yeah. yeah, I was just following anybody around oh, who'd fuck, give me I attention. Remember you getting there too? <laughs> Shrimp on the plane, what a fucking league! Oh fuck! <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Sid, is that your limo? Oh fuck! <laughs> this is fucking sick. Can that I see your me, paychecks? Man. Let me see. How does it yeah. look like? I was like the <laughs> yes. I was like the girls oh on the, on, the, on the Bachelorette. Like oh my god, the fantasy suite. You were oh so you were so fired up. It was fun though. I like that. It was, you're just being honest. Oh, like, buddy, that like I said, oh, yeah. my like first, a lot of guys get called up and they're like, uh, my fear, yeah. first experience in the NHL was when we went to Sweden to those to those world premiere games and like that dinner that we had, and then like I said, Sundin had lined something up upstairs for us yeah. afterward, and I'm like, well, and next thing you know, Daryl Sador was doing the worm on the dance floor, but <laughs> somebody had dropped a, a, a vodka God. soda, so there was like shards Smash of glass black. everywhere, oh, no. so it looked like somebody had lit him up with like a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he's, had all these. Yeah. 
the white, <laughs> the white shirt just <laughs> speckled. Yeah, yeah. It's like if somebody had gone him with a shotgun and he had all these little that specks was, of blood bleeding everywhere. Well, that was, was better worm. than the night before we went to a gay bar. Yeah. Whoop, you loved it. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> actually, I, was, I brought us there. I, I brought like, us there. I was like, they're playing good music and everything. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. probably going to be girls like, here. Oh, guys, I from a dude. I'm like, <laughs> this is awesome. This is amazing. <laughs> this is like research. He's like, <laughs> he's like, like can you please cover. That? We don't have to bury five dollar cover only. Those other places are forty. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you went there. <laughs> I get this free ticket at the door. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. No, so wait, so back to wit. Wit was like, oh, you don't go, want to talk about blowjobs? Yeah. <laughs> Speed bump over that one. Uh, yeah, no, wit. Like after practice, sometimes he'd be down, and I just, I order a beer at lunch and I just pound it in front of him and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, he'd smile <laughs> and he'd laugh at it. And I was like, just trying to get him out of his like own. playing with your kid. Yeah. yeah. It was like, like trying to make him happy. Like, plastic car smile, keys. Smile. smile. That, that's what I do now. I'm, that's why I'm part of the check. Yes, team. Yeah. Just to make him happy. I look at the draft they held out. The uh, Preds get the 15th in the 24th pick. They got two in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth. Any chance they try to move up to maybe a top 10 spot? I, you know what? Someone was saying the other day, why wouldn't they... Give all their picks and just get Bedard. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, hold on. Just take all of our right picks. Yeah. That's a hell uh, of an idea. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't know. I. You know what the thing Those is? Skills. His idea. <laughs> he well, text Poyle at two a.m. in the morning. He's like, I, I just had this epiphany. I got, I got an idea. Yeah. And he's like, wait. You, no, you, I, to- you know what? I I think it's it's going to be interesting because I I, I they got to make a move, right? You're in Nashville. Right, you got to make it's a move. Here. Remember Montreal last year? Yeah, like they you, came up out of the gates and took Slavkovsky and did all those moves at the start, and like Kirby Doc and all those trades. Yeah. Let's go, Trotsy. Okay, so what would you do, Skelzy? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, yeah. all right, what, what I would do is I think they're going to do a rebuild, but I think you have to look a year down the road. I, I think you have to set the table by getting some young guys and with the cap space that they have. I, I think you could you can take some flyers on younger guys now to to pump in. So whether you get those through trades or you know it, with the draft picks, but you know you got I think it was a two first rounders, two second round, two third rounders. Like what are the odds any of those it, guys even play though? Like if you look at the no, numbers, but, so but, it's like you, you can use those as well, capital. What are the odds that anyone? But I yeah. shouldn't. I should never been in the league except Ray Bork was my partner and. Shit, it works yes, Here you go, Borky. You know, um, but that, but I think you, if you take the chances and you do the right things, I think they can turn that into something quick. Yeah. In, in not next year, but the year after. I, I just think it would be is what a shame if you wasted Roman Yossi's career yeah. and UC Saros on a on a three or four year rebuild like. What a waste. So what you're hoping for at this draft is they trade some of those picks away to maybe get aggressiveness. some aggressiveness. Take some flyers a on, little on bit of aggr- current NHLers think, who might be playing hey, be at aggressive. a bottom. Get some young guys that are going to be great. You don't need, they don't need to be the nuts right now. You need them like uh, take some flyers on guys. Is there, like, any, like, is there anybody in your head that you can think of right now as a name? I, I don't know. Are, I, you might have to keep your cards tight to your chest because they don't want you saying anything. No, I can say whatever I want. Okay, perfect. No, but uh, but What's no, on Trotsky's board. No, I don't. I don't think there's. I just. <laughs> That's what I was asking. Yeah, I think. I think they're gonna get. There's gonna be a lot of conversations. I think Trotsky's gonna kind of pick and choose what he wants to do. But I think he's. If he gets the right deal, they also have a Skarov, who's a oh, that young other goalie, goalie. He's sick, which right? is a, like a, he's a beauty doing push-ups on the yeah. you know with the goal and stuff. Like he's a character. So you know, like. Would they ever move Saros? Would they ever move him? You know, like mm-hmm. they, there's going to be an overlap with those guys at some point. Is, is he not the type of kid you got to bring in and nurture and like make the backup for a little bit? And cause well, he, he's got to play in Milwaukee. Correct. But I think he's a, a huge prospect. Like they're excited about him. And so that's another piece of leverage that they have, you know, like, you know, I, I, I just think there's, there's so many ways that they could go with this. It's going to be, I, I don't know. I'm I'm just Would you suggesting trade UC Soros? Knowing that you have him and then you got a year for him to be ready. You know what the pre- David Poyle told me 
hey, we love your game. We're happy with you. We're, you're coming back next year. And then in the draft, they got Seth Jones. And they said, hey, guess what? We got Seth Jones. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I'll work with him. Good yeah, young mentor. Defenseman. Great. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, no, you're not. You're, 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 we're, <laughs> no, he's we're buying, taking we're buying your you up. You, you're gone. Yeah. Stop, I was like, okay, what, what, about that? <laughs> what, what about you're doing great? You know, yeah, we got a great job for you coaching kids, though, in Mass. <laughs> yeah, so uh, exactly. best of luck. Thank and you for all the help it. along the way. And see ya. Yeah, yeah no, I think... And, uh, Hey, if someone gives you a deal, yeah. you take it, yeah. right? Yeah. My house isn't for sale. We'll give you this much. Okay, yeah, it's, it's for, for sale. sale. Yeah. While we're talking about this rebuilding, we were just at the cup finals and you know how both those teams were. They were built old school, a lot of jam, big D, guys like yourself. Could you see the Preds maybe focusing on those kind of moves or what do you the think? copycat league? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. think it's going to head that way? It's old hard school? It's like, it's a fast game. Everyone yeah. talks about a fast game. Like Montreal had the biggest deep when they when, when they the went final, to the final. Yeah. They have a big D like they were a piece. And I remember talking to people about it. Like that's, that's if they ever do anything that, but I feel like it's hard. Like if you get a team that's like that and they don't make the playoffs, it's like, you gotta, it, you gotta, yeah, you gotta get, get to get the through playoffs the regular season to a get regular to, the, se- yeah. to that playoffs where you need it's the big like bodies. two different games. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, and I don't know. I, like, I feel bad for GMs. Like I was talking to Billy Guerin and he's like, we had a good team. We just, you, you miss a window. Like, like you, you, your team has a five minute lapse and you lose. And every you have move one you guy, made, you have one guy that doesn't, that underperforms for two weeks yeah, and it like fucks your whole line. Yeah. Like the Boston Bruins, <laughs> how amazing were they? Yeah. And then they, it's just like, it's gone. Dud. You know, speaking of copycat, I mean, it seems like Matthew Kachuk started a trend, you know, the whole like basically deciding he's not going to sign. Why do you think guys didn't play this card before? Do you think maybe there was just too much deference to front offices? They didn't want to piss like general you have to managers be big, off. You have to be, you have to be Lindros. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Like Lindros was the first, yeah. right? Was he the first one? That's I think like, he's the first one that like I'm not forced himself it. into that spot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, from, I'm not from, a, from, from a young person with no leverage perspective. Yes. Yeah. But I, think I think Mario I think did, did too, didn't he? Did he didn't go when he got drafted. He didn't go up, or he didn't go go up to the thing. There was like a dispute already about. Oh, contract. really? I don't know. I don't oh, know. that's I right. I think there was with Mario, like when he got drafted. He wanted ownership, and then he got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the guys are such. There's such bigger assets now, right? Yeah. Like, like it used to be like. I don't know. I, I I just think, with the way the cap is, like guys are looking for leverage. You used to go like, I want to make more money, and that. Now yeah. teams are like, well, we don't have any more money. Candy's gone. Sorry. Now you know? every guy so, at Calgary's followed suit. <laughs> Calgary's Everyone's like, like just yeah, an exodus. It's a well, mess right now. What he did now. is, what Kachuk did too is, is like forever for the last, I don't know how many years, the bridge deal. Like bridge deal. Yeah. We'll bridge you. Give you a two, three year bridge. I, I and wish he was kind of like, that's what you get for bridging me. Yeah. You know, suck it. I'm off to Florida. Peace out. You should have got me eight years. That's true. Shouldn't have bridged me. Like but that was a recipe. Like when I came in the league, control. it was like no one wanted a big contract until you got like, boom, big, yeah. big money. Right. you like, you wanted one or two year deals to like get the qualifying offer and then get to build it. Get and to now, UFA. Now it's like, I played two years and now I want my eight for eight. Uh, that's. Uh, hell, as far as the fandom here, do they, do they ever get impatient or are they, are they still kind of happy to be here, like just having the team here? They started to get a this little This is the cranky. first year that they were, it was second year, I, I guess. That they were like, no, this is not good enough. We, okay. we we're supposed to win. We're pissed off. Um, and that's what that you being want. said, they're, yeah. they're not they're not assholes about it. Right, right. You know, they're not they're not you know throwing stuff at you and at dinner. Um, but they're just like they're they're a little more. I, I think it's a good thing because it's it's proving to be a hockey market where you got some negativity. Yeah, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. Every good hockey market has people that trash. You, you want know? to hold their feet to the fire a little bit. Yeah. Like, you know, Tom Brady was with the Patriots and, and he threw an interception. I remember this like when he was still with the team, he's, they're like, he's, he's old, he's done. He's like, Ugh. and then he goes on to win more. You know, I, I think Nashville's getting to that point where they're, they can be negative and it's okay. 
Keith Urban's like coming into the team. He's like, uh, hey guys, if you guys don't mind, I was just wondering if you're going to get any new free agents this year. <laughs> Does he talk like that? I think Keith he has Urban? a soft, like, soft, is he Australian, right? Yeah. 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 She has like a soft. It's actually pretty good. Are, yeah. Are you, yeah. Are you, yeah. Are you, <laughs> pretty good? I, it was pretty good. <laughs> I don't really know what Keith Urban He's very soft. He sings a lot guy. better He's than that. I'll tell you yeah. He's very well, you, talented. The, the best part about playing in Nashville is like the, the country music stars, they're at Whole Foods and they're walking next to you. And, As that's blowing up and, even no, bigger now too. And, and no one talks to them. Like you just wow. don't. No one in Nashville. Really? You don't, no one. Like no as, one. as a respect thing where it's like, yo, yeah, they want to like, you live in Nashville. We know country music is big. Like you just don't, no one talks to them. Wow. And so that kind of, you know, parlays into hockey too, where you can, once you leave the rink, you get passionate fans and Broadway's nuts and it's awesome. And then you, you leave the rink and it's, no one's going to bother you. It's, really? a, it's actually nice. Well, that's probably why guys want to play here. So oh much yeah. Too. And tax free. I think kind of yeah. like we, we would sit and Nate up in uh, Nova <laughs> Scotia a few years ago. We went to that restaurant and like people weren't like staring at him. If in America, they had their phones out taking pictures. They, they, you know, gave him space. They didn't bother him at all. I don't know if you noticed that. No, there. no, for, yeah. for, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, I was just going to go back. Well, they were in Canada. That guy was was sitting next to him, probably played junior, would have been better than him. The <laughs> coach didn't put him on the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he blew his knee. Busted my knee up. He busted his knee. I got like the old lady pregnant. Was, Couldn't go play junior. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Hey, where's the craziest, where's the best place you played? Because you played, you know, some original sixes in there mixed with- Hockey wide Montreal's. In Pittsburgh, Pretty you won nice. a cup. That was your spot. Oh, what the fuck? I, I so, did yeah, this is what I say too. Yeah, you won a cup, but like- your buddies with uh, Jeff Molson was very good to you. You guys are friends. Yeah. He gave you commem- com- commem- com- commemorative commemorative circumcision. He gave me commemorative, <laughs> <laughs> commemorative a, Molson bottles of beer <laughs> for your 1000 game with like your face on it and stuff. I remember seeing yeah. those, which is super cool. So that, that place is that, that well, was, we also went in there. That was like the centennial year. It, like Bruins got that coming up, right? A hundred years. Um, like, it was a circus and we were a new team and we had a bunch of new guys and it was just, we had fun. It was like, it was, but Montreal, like every game is so huge, right? Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's special. You, and, and every, I, you know what I loved is like, there's the levels of, Ooh, ah, e, ah, e, oh. throughout the game. They yeah, know yeah. the game like so I'd, well. I'd, I'd, I'd make a poke check and you'd hear the crowd go, ah, oh. Yeah. It was like a little. They appreciated it. It was a little one. It wasn't like a, <laughs> a loud roar. It was just like, oh, you know. Like would you it, feel, so, would you build confidence off oh, of their reaction? Yeah, that, that like would everything. Feel nice. It was just like they're so in tune with the game. You leave, like, you know, right when I got there, there's a homeless guy. He's like looking for money. And I turn around. He's like, oh, you're Hal Gill. And I was like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you watch Pardon? it. Yeah. How do you, like, what, you read the paper this morning and saw I'd sign there. You know, like it's, um, yeah, no, it's just a it's a cool place to play. Yeah, and Nashville is probably my Toronto. I I loved it, but it was like I still get I still can't understand the whole second period lapse. Like it just drove me crazy. What do you mean by that? The people like the the, the people yeah, they're going to sniff eating counters? shrimp cocktail to start the In, second yeah. period, and it's. The Yacht Club. The Yacht Club. We, we joked about it on the TNT broadcast. Yeah, no, I saw you guys talking about it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you look at my new it's, a real, it's, it's a real thing. Like Paul club. Maurice came in the locker room. He's like, all right, guys, this sec- start to the second is going to be tough. Like, we got to get them some emotion here. And you know you're not going to get it from the crowd, so let's go. And I was like, like, I don't I, 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 I'm not poo-pooing on Toronto. I no, love we're Toronto. we're poo-pooing a shit on them and, right now. And, <laughs> and, and, no, but it's like you, you're the – the center of the universe yeah. for hockey and you can't show up for a second period. Yeah. It was like, it's a real thing. And it's like, and you can see it, you can see like all the seats. And I just say like, I, that would, that disappointed me. There had to have been more though. I feel like the media there just makes it unbearable to play to where guys are like, fuck this. I'm not signing there as a free agent. Like from yeah. the media perspective, was that by far the worst and you, and you, you know, it, you talked about being fair. And like, even when you were a little bit critical of Forsberg, you like called him to apologize where do you feel like they're like unnecessarily guys would un- run away from him. like, that's what <laughs> yeah. the, the other media members, uh, no, the players, our players, oh. like, uh, you'd walk in a locker room and it was like, everyone's gone. Yeah. You know, like it just, you know, then no one wanted to deal with that. 
you, you talk about Paul Maurice and like, I feel like this year I really, everyone got to hear a lot about him with his press conference. Awesome. They made that run. Like got any like good stories or how good of a coach he was. He seems like he's an amazing guy. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought he was, <laughs> I, I have a lot of stories about him, but he's, um, you know what I, I'm trying to think of once. So we're at, um, a restaurant in bar restaurant in, uh, Carolina and he goes back there and he's, he shows up like that's, that's where he's from, right? He's, he's coached there. So he's coming back and I was at the bar and he walks up to me and he goes, shit, I'm sorry, buddy. I, I'm supposed to meet people. Is it still cool if, if I go in? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you got here first. I don't want to, I know the rules, you know, <laughs> your players are here first. I got to go. And he, that's the rule. I was like, yeah. yeah, that's the rule. Right. And, and he was like, no, I, 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 I go ahead. I'll let, I'll let it slide this time. Mo. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he was, he was, a. I thought he was a great, I, I can see the way he cares about his players. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he came up to me one time and he goes after practice, he goes, look at Alex Dean. Does he have a drop of sweat on him? And I was like, no, he's a machine. And he goes, yeah. And we had a 45 minute practice and you're dying. He's like, you got to get off the ice and I'm going to kick you off. And I'm like, you can't kick me off early. He goes, I was, I, I was playing a lot. I was playing like 26 minutes a night. And I was like, I, I needed to rest, but I didn't want, like, you can't, I'm not a superstar. I can't take rest. Mm -hmm. So it, it was like, he was like, you're, you're going to die out there. Like he was just like, he got each guy's, point of view. And I think that was the biggest thing. You could see it throughout the play. Like he, he stuck up for his guys. Like he believed in his guys. He cares for his players. It's yeah. like a guy like that like, you want to play for and you like how crazy he's like, they need a different voice in Winnipeg. So I'm, I'm going to bow out. See ya. Yeah. You know, like, uh, Unless he had a scoop that Florida was going to. Yeah. Gonna yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't ruin a good story. <laughs> I think this is the, f the first time that they're doing the awards in the draft in the same city like this. So the city must be buzzing. Like It's probably a big civic pride thing for them to have be basically the first city to, to be doing this. Where are you going to be posting up all week for both I, I'm, I We got a lot going on. I, that's, the, that's the fun part. I'm, I'm trying to look at the schedule and figure out, you know, like you got to pace yourself, right? Yeah. You know, like you want to go too hard here. And, um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. I'll be around the rink. I think we got some alumni, Preds alumni in town. So, um, we're going to be working with them and hanging out with a lot them. of bag chuckers. A lot of bag chuckers. Town. There's going to be a lot of bag chuckers. <laughs> well, that's the funny. It's like, we, I was talking to like every once in a while, I'll get it. Hey, you know, any reservation? I'm like, yeah, good luck getting a reservation, you know, like around, now you know it's like it's it's going to be nuts but um i think everyone loves the hockey community loves nashville just because it's simplicity and and so now it's it's going to be a whole different thing where it's going to be packed like you always see people you know right in the, in the hockey world you bump into people now all of them are going to be on broadway yeah it's it's going to be you know it's like it's gonna be hard to find bachelorette parties. You ever get called up on stage at one of these bars? You ever you ever play the guitar? No one ever calls me up. I just end up there <laughs> with my shirt off, and, and, and you sing country tunes and you get involved like that. Yeah, have you been to Nashville? Yeah, well, I've never been on stage or gotten called up. Really? Yeah, no. I just was wondering if you were one of those guys that would get roped into doing that. Roped and where's in, your spot? Roped it. Oh yeah, I mean, some guys make me do it. Yeah, <laughs> where's no, your spot here? Where you, do the boys hang out? What's the big? What's the cool? Like, are you guys more like off the off the Broadway? Every, that's the fun part. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't hang out on Broadway. I've I, been to this place I, called I, Winners and Losers, which yeah. is a good spot. That's off the Strip. Good yeah. time. That's a that's close. That's more of a local tin spot. roof. Is that is tin that roof? Tin roof. Local spot. Tin roof is it used to be the the boys' spot. Now it's it's. It's, things have changed around here. Well, they now go. it's got to be the Barstool Nashville bar. It's got to be the new yeah, spot for the right. team. So you got to help us with that. Yeah. You got to get them guys in there. So yeah. keep that going. Well, you know, it's, it's, that's yeah, the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. Company I, guy. So everyone comes in town. Where should I go? And I give them a list of all the great restaurants. All the, yeah. And they, I go, where did you go? They, oh, I went to Tootsie's. Tootsie's. Yeah. I stayed there all day. I had Jack's barbecue. <laughs> I'm like, um, my, uh, like I, I'm going to go after this. I'm going to go to Martin's barbecue and saddle up there. That's my spot. Actually, I did. I, I think I went there. You, you took me there. Yes. We went there. The Dude, he's a king in there. Garden. He went in there. 
They're like, welcome in. There's a lineup. We like went right in. He knows everyone in there. He took me there. It was sick. I never did it before, but there was a massive lineup outside this place. A yeah. lot of these places. Yeah. He's a friend of mine, Pat Martin, Martin's barbecue is the, and it's got a roof that the top bars. Yeah. Insane. It's nice outside with roof garden, great barbecue beers. Right up your alley. Give me beers and I'm happy. As yeah. far as uh, your workload and what you're doing now, are you looking to try to maybe advance and, and do more on the media front? Or are you just content and happy with where you're at right now? I, yeah, I'll do anything, but I, I, I like, you know what I love is being part of a team. Like we have yeah. a good team, you know? And so like, that's, that's the fun part is traveling with, you know, Mace and Willie, Lindsay, like we go out, we have a good time. Um, and then we're trying to bang out shows and it's, I, you know, I did, I did some stuff, you know, like trying to figure it out, but, um, you know, it's, it's tough flying around without a team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get on the PJ and it's like, you know, all, you know? all you're saying is in like doing the other stuff, well, you just get, star it's hotels. going back to get, yeah. getting lonely and yeah. being on the road by yourself. Yeah. yeah. So you're just happier. Being I know like, you're never lonely because you roll deep, but you know, <laughs> I got the, yeah, I got the, all these idiots. Right there. <laughs> no, I'm alone by myself pretty much in Atlanta and I get, I get what you're saying, especially with the no. Yeah. You get, I get squirrely. Yeah. You start FaceTime. I went up to uh, Stanford, Connecticut and I was like, Oh, that's for the NHL network. It was like, I was like, what am I looking at? You know, like, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's tough, but it's different um, than being like going into a studio and being in there, there than being in your community. Yeah. Doing the team you cover every single yeah. day. Yeah. I, I like, fun to, I, I, but I'll, I'll do anything, but you know, I always say like, I hope I'm not good so I can just get fired. <laughs> right? yeah. Like when you start off, like when I started doing broadcast and I was on TV, I did a, a Nesson game with, it was a BU UNH. And I like froze. The camera came on. I was like, my heart started racing. I was out. like, oh my God. And the producer's like saying something. I was like, stop talking to me. I can't, oh, I can't. buddy, that's the I've worst. That. They're talking. I'm like, yeah. I, 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 uh, How about I'm when done. you're talking and then they start talking in your ear and yeah. I'm just like, ah, somebody's talking in my ear right Deer now. And I can't think of what and I so, want to say. And so I, I was like, I hate it. I'm never doing that again. And then someone said, hey, can you do this? I did it. And I was like, since I don't like it, I don't really care. And then as soon as I didn't give a shit, it was like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. I, you know, like, and I know you don't give a shit. That's, you know, <laughs> like, that's why, you know, that's right. You got to so really good. lean in. There. Really <laughs> lean, you know, you know? like, okay. Yeah. Who were you doing that game with? Do you remember? Uh, like, I, I don't was, even remember. Oh, I, didn't know I, I had a package built out on all these guys and they like <laughs> started rolling other guys. I was like, I don't, I don't even know who he is. I forgot. I, you forgot. You've, it's like the first time you've seen. We got to get this clip. <laughs> oh, it was somebody said it to us. You got it. I know somebody's <laughs> got a VHS. I've had the ones when that. I started where you, you can't finish your thought. And it's like you keep, it's like a run on sentence yes. on run on sentence. Yeah. It's like you don't know how to get it back to the person. This guy's a really good yeah. playmaker. Or, He's a good or, passer. Or, 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 I got, I got has a great vision. Yeah. And he makes great They're passes. Like this, huh? He's got, he looks, can see the ice well. And you're just struggling, but you can't let it go. Stop <laughs> Send it to commercial. <laughs> Your uh, brain is literally blacked yeah. out, but you can't stop. Yeah. Oh, man. I give her the, oh, I got a few things here. And I say the first thing and I'm like, I completely forgot what the second thing was. That's one of my go-tos. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I've, I've had a few of those brain farts, man. Holy fuck. There's a heart kicking the gear. And, oh, yeah. and then I get, I get in trouble for saying certain things. And then I hear Biz talking. I'm like, I want to call my boss and be like um hello like, why are you, Do you giving not have this shit? channel I, on your cable subscription we said, we said <laughs> the coach was pissed off you can't say that you I'm said kidding. pissed and they said you can't say that well, there's, I mean, upset. like it's, it, oh you know, we're God. respectable. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like at a certain point, the pendulum swung a little bit too far the other way. And everybody has went a little bit too squirrely where I feel like it might like swing right back to the yeah. middle. No, I'm going to be able to say pissed on a broadcast. Yeah, I just got to make sure my son's in bed before, you know, you come on. Yeah. That's why we do the Western game. He starts asking me what belly button is all about. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> belly button soup. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, probably, I probably shouldn't have never said that. Changed, I haven't heard never belly changed. button probably, soup. Before. Probably shouldn't have said that. Uh, <laughs> no, but First I, time with a 17 cent. I, to, to go back to the not giving a fuck, though, but I, I get nervous before every single broadcast. <laughs> yeah. I got nervous before I did uh, radio with the Yeah, coyotes. that's what you want. You want to have yeah. a yeah, rush, yeah. So, right? so do you get that? Like before yeah, you I get, get, I get excited, jacked yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it's when it paralyzes, it's like it's mm -hmm. like anything. You you're gonna play in Game Seven of Stanley Cup Finals. You're gonna be nervous, but it's like it's fun. You don't go get on the ice and go ah uh, and freeze, right? You, 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 you do that, play. but you do that before your pregame nap. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Is this thing over yet? Uh, no. <laughs> Good lord! Can we, we didn't ask about the Pens. I want to ask you about the Stanley Cup, sure. the Pens team. Those yeah. we've, group we've, of guys. we've already interviewed him twice. But oh, so you got yeah. it in on there? Okay, well, fuck it. Right. We get new listeners. I mean, it's then. always fun to talk about uh, the Stanley we, Cup. Well, and why don't you guys got to come back more? Well, I think, at, to Pittsburgh. You I know, think. it was fun playing with Sid. Um, after he stopped crying because Army's gone, Army's <laughs> gone, Army's gone. He was he got over it pretty quick. quick. He got no, he didn't. No, I don't know if he ever will. When you were gone, I remember talking to him, and he was like, oh, "Army is the best. You you would love you would loved him." <laughs> but well, yeah, we had a good run. That was you know what you were there. Like that's a, that's a good team. That's yeah, a good, it's a good. Crew. That was a good crew. Like yeah. all the way organization wise, yeah, everything. So it was and it was fun. And I will say, we talked about Toronto, Montreal. Like when when I was there, we'd have. 10 to 12 couples out to dinner after every game. Right. Yeah. It was like, we had a, like, there's nothing to do in Pittsburgh. So you, you had to find a restaurant and stay open cheesecake. and everyone would go out. Yeah. Do cheesecake or, and like we had a good crew there. So like, yeah. I, like I think that's hard to get, yeah. you know, like to get everyone to bond together. And in Pittsburgh, it was a little easier just cause it's Pittsburgh. Yeah. And then we had you, you your team back for like a 10 year anniversary thing, but It'd be nice to get you guys back a lot more. I know. I yeah, I, I'm all for that. So we we'll get good, the alumni. We had on a good you. time. We had a good time from that. Good lord. We'll get the alumni. It's like on the you same guys. jokes. It's ten years later. Yeah, I know. Same, same jokes. jokes. Same stories. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you have to drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, but Gino knew English when yeah. he, like last time I was there. I want to hear about now. one of your spots. I know that has not been covered as the European. What do you call me? European correspondent. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got to hear about your stop in Luco during the lockout in Luco Finland. Roma. Yeah, is it true? You were the most penalized guy in the league that year. Yeah. You know, what was funny is um, like, that was the first time I, I went good, over, Mouse. I went over and called out their bench, like one of their benches. I'm like, I'll fight any one of you. Please. Whoa, you don't <laughs> normally get that. No, no. I was like, come out, please. And I, they were all just like, you know, like they're just, and then one of the teams, Jody Shelley was playing football. Oh, shit, yeah. I, I go, Jody, let's not do I'm like, I, I don't want to, if, if anything happens, I'm your guy and I don't want to be your guy. So yeah. like, and he goes, I'm over here dangling, buddy. Yeah. I'm, not, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going out to fight. Yeah. He's giving you the heads up, heads up uh, when he's yeah. coming to four check. Yet? He well, the, best, the best is like when I, Oh, they're like NHL guys going over there and like they wanted us to play and like showcase. They had me in the slot on the power play. I was like bumper back one tease. I was like, like I, I think I had two goals. No. <laughs> and they're like, oh, he's got to you got to be better there. And I'm like, do you, have you guys watched me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You got, the wrong, job. You got yeah. the wrong job here. Yeah, their but YouTube it was, was green. That was fun. And the Finns right up until New Year's would go out and get annihilated every night yeah and, and then, then to would, the sauna party then they would yeah. dial it in for the playoff run no it's as soon as the new year hits it just, like, everyone goes into a cave and they disappear oh and, and like, then they come out players. for the end of the season bender and go absolutely bananas and they, they rent a sauna sleep. for two weeks yep. <laughs> and blow it out and just like you walk in there any time of day someone's like pass out on the edge of the sauna with a bottle of vodka and wow. they just like go, they just blow the doors out <laughs> and then, and then, and then no one goes out ever after like they just, they just disappear. That's what that uh, Parson and I played with his dad in Sweden and that was it. You would see him at the start of the year, at the start of the year party, you'd see him on one of the European breaks around Christmas for any do it 48 hours straight. And yep. then you, you wouldn't see him again to the end of the season bender. And he would do like 72 hours straight. No sleep. Like quiet guy in general, quiet like guy the, in general, oh. but just like 
two darts in his mouth at once, like just <laughs> yeah, yeah, gun yeah. for two days. Here's an idea. Why don't we open up a nightclub that's a sauna? <laughs> a sauna club? Yeah. Well, just a bit like more of it. It's got the music and the He's, tunes There's a in DJ there. in it's the like corner. This. It's like yeah, Chris Chelios. Yeah. Yeah. Chris <laughs> Chelios is DJing in the corner. <laughs> they have those, <laughs> on the they have those in Switzerland and Germany. He's like, he would like, let's call it Peloton. <laughs> He's got the Peloton there and he's running a class. He's got a little microphone. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, this one time fucking Babcock sat me at the Winter Classic, that fucking asshole. All right, crank up the RPMs here. <laughs> Bring me another brew. Sorry. Um, that was a great chat. Well, Skillsy. I got Skillsy fired up for that league, though, because we got in a dust up. We, you, you dragged all the shit out of me, but you got, <laughs> it was actually pretty fun. It was that, hilarious. That was you picked me up. We didn't know what we were doing. You guys were ugly fighters. Skillsy, do you crushed me coming in the zone? Then I got up, then like Gino came at you. Then I came to like defend Gino yeah. now. Skills, he's like huge. I, I you, came out I of fell it. fell over, and then I tried he's to pick you up. He's throwing me around. He picked me up, then he threw me down it was again. More, it wasn't even a up, fight. I just it dropped my like gloves, a, and I stepped on a stick. And it was like Skills, he threw a bomb on me and fell, like crumpled me. He it's just crumpled so stupid. me. And then I went in the box. I remember I was like flexing. I was like, <laughs> no. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, fight? yeah. I was like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe him. I fought him. He's huge. I didn't know him. Yeah, I didn't know him. He's so huge. The, fa the fans just think you took it was down in Goro. Toronto. It was in Toronto too. So they were like, they they knew they know hockey. You know, they're like, what's this guy celebrating? He got crumpled. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of those things. So. It was awesome. It was so awesome. stupid. So stupid. You got anything else? You got anything for us, Skillsy? Any questions? Yeah. No. You guys are killing it. It's fun to watch. Like, Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Honestly, like, you. you know, like starting from. My couch in Southie, was, you know, like <laughs> episode yeah. fourteen. Right. Jesus Christ, yeah, I mean, right? Wayne, we're like come we're, a long way. Wayne, we like a combination of like SoundCloud rappers and Wayne and Goth, you know, on the couch, <laughs> yeah. one microphone, and yeah, it's it's been a hell no, of a you ride, guys, so it's, it's uh, that. I love what you guys are doing for for hockey and for you know getting it out. Like I, I have a lot of people like young kids that are like, oh, you you, you weren't spitting chicklets, like and I was like, yeah, and they're like. That's awesome. I'm like, I also played in the NHL. Yeah. Like, yeah. I was like, yeah, Cup yeah, Cup well, whatever, but that's so cool. What's Biz like? I'm like, yeah. he's a loser. He's the donkey you see on TV. He's a loser. <laughs> Same old loser. Uh, but yeah, no, that was, thanks for having me. I, no. um, yeah, you guys keep it up. We'll, Good we stuff. Will. Enjoy Nashville. No, we will. Don't burn it down, please. No, no. Not Congrats on everything post career too, buddy. Doing hey, that. thank you. Yeah, awesome. Bag thank chuckers, yeah. throw the hat here. Get it yeah. on camera here. Yeah. Get some, get some bag chuckers swag. Absolutely. Show Lobby and 10. We're off. bringing it back. Thank, thanks got, so much, Al. Yeah. 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 Like Lobby and 10. Oh, yeah. There we go. Backtracker.com. Get on it. Get on it. Well, Hal, thanks so much. Third time was a charm. We appreciate it very much, and I will see you around this week. Thank you. Appreciate right, you buddy. guys. Before we go any further, here's a word from our friends at Labatt Blue. Summer is almost over, but that doesn't mean the Labatt Blue light should stop flowing. Whether you're on the golf course, at beer league, or you're hitting the beach, you cannot find a better beer than a fresh Labatt Blue Light. Lots of things are better together. Hockey, food, golf. But if you really want to take things to the next level, drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends and live life to the power of we. I just got back from Vermont, nice little family trip. And let me tell you something, the Labatt Blue Lights were flowing by the lake because there's nothing like a fresh Canadian Pilsner while you enjoy some downtime before hockey season. And remember, take a page out of the Labatt Blue Light Book and enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Find Labatt Blue Light at labattusa.com slash finder. Huge thanks to Skillsy for jumping on with us once again. Absolutely hilarious guy. It was nice to hang out with him, not only when we interviewed him, G, but also at the, uh, what is it, the awards night. Got to have a couple pops from there, too. He's a, he's a funny bastard for sure, but. Uh, we got to move over to the Chicklets Cup, and I'm wondering, Merles, you, you getting in shape yet? You're doing uh, some up and downs, uh, running some laps. What's going on with you and the team Barstool? Uh, no outside gym yet, like I did for the Vegas Chicklets Cup. This has been strictly just long runs, just trying to lose the fat right now. Um, as we get closer, I'll jump on the treadmill. I'll start doing the sprints more, try to get the heart rate going on real high rate. I like to do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. You know, pretty good speed, elevated. That'll get me going. Training like it's a hockey season. But my biggest thing is the roster. I'm, you know, G's, G's working me to put the roster together here. I got a couple names down. I, I assume we'll have Chef Donnie as a goalie. He was our best player last year. He kept us in all the games. I see he's over in Europe studying some cooking, I think, G. Is that true? Yeah, it's that was kind of crazy. It's just one day I opened TikTok and Donnie was like, I moved to France this summer and I'm cooking in a, a random village in France's 
kitchen all summer. So shout out to Donnie. That's awesome. Give him a follow on TikTok. It's a pretty crazy journey, but hopefully he's back from France in time for the Chicklets Cup because we need him in, in goal. We got to have him. He's he's great. He's him. great out there. He's great in the locker room. He, he, we got to have him. On D, I got, I got you penciled in with Adam again, the ringer from Toronto. We all remember he was our leading scorer. So you two together and then me and Army dropping Avery from my right D partner, pick up Army. I think that's a, a pretty good upgrade. <laughs> and I move over to the forwards and, and, you know, we got some long veterans, long time veterans there. We got Chief and Fights and Jordy. I figure those three are 100% in. Memes. No one will smoke more cigarettes than that line. I'll tell you oh, right Jesus. now. Fights is out of control. <laughs> and uh, I put Memes down. He looked pretty good last year as a rookie. I assume he can make the trip down again. That's a short drive for him. So and uh, another guy I'm trying to get, I want to get is Rudy. If you remember from Vegas, he was your best player out in Vegas. I think he scored more than Patrick Sharp actually in Vegas. That's I how think good you're Rudy forgetting was. one guy is Riggs. Riggs is Riggs, is, Riggs has been our was our best player in Vegas as well. He's oh, got great okay. hands. I think he contributed yeah. to that Chicklets Cup D League Championship that we put together in Vegas. But uh, I think if Riggs if Riggs is available, Ooh. we got to have Riggs. Yeah, yeah, I do know, and I do remember him. He was a Harvard guy, so as an ECAC guy, I don't want to talk too much about him, but. Yeah, Riggs and Rudy, they they carried your team out there, so we'd like to get them. Right now, I got Darling still as a question mark. He's been there a few years. He's a veteran, but Wit wasn't Ooh, happy with you have him. Darling is a bubble guy right I got now. Him as a bubble. I mean, if you can get Riggs and Rudy back, and I mean, I don't know how many guys you want to carry. I don't know what our our uh, salary cap is this year now that we're owned by just Barstool. Now, are you looking outside the organization at all? Any free agents, potential trades, or anything going down? Where I know, I know you brought in Army here, but is there anyone else you're thinking about bringing in that I should be aware of? I, I not unless a bunch of these guys cancel, just because we have to respect them that they've been to all the other ones. They're part of the company. We need them on the team. I mean, it would take a a player like Adam to to bump one of them. I would assume. So you have like official spots open right now. Or you're just kind of waiting for everybody to get back. So yeah, we're gonna the, have to. No, no. What do I got? I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got seven forwards written down. I think ideally you want to go with six. You don't want to be sitting there too long. That's why I'm playing D, so we can go. I can get out every other shift. That's the scam there. <laughs> Same as men's league. Always play D. They always play four D. Get out twice every other one. Half the hustle too. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait to get back to Buffalo. Man. Do you awesome have any? Uh, do you get any offers to coach any other teams? All right, I know you coached a different team halfway through the tournament last year. Coach, yeah, uh, I, nothing yet. Uh, I'm not sure. I've had a couple people asking about if the if the, I want to play goalie, but I'm 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 retired, man. I retired in Detroit. Too old to be uh, getting too hurt at this stage. But yeah, we'll see what happens. We got a we got a, you know, a couple months before we get to that. I might have a rig of fire if you're looking for players. Uh, hit me on the hit me on the DM on the side. I'll, I'll let right, you know. We'll right. see what happens. Uh, you boys watching uh, any any good shit lately? TVs, movies, any of that shit, Brendan? What do you All got right, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the uh, two documentaries because I, I saw your tweets about them, the Jake Paul documentary and the Johnny Manziel documentary because I thought, I mean, Untold does an incredible job with their docs. I thought yep. both were really good. But then after your tweet about the Johnny Manziel one, I started thinking a bit more about it. And, you know, I do, I do wish they dove a little deeper into, you know, him talking about... Um, you know, his drug use, um, you know, the, the gun, uh, miss, miss shooting when he, when he tried to potentially kill himself, there was like a lot of gray spots that I didn't really realize until I saw your tweet. So, and I, I personally thought the Jake Paul documentary was fantastic. Um, it did seem like it was a bit of like Jake Paul propaganda. Hmm. Um, but at the same time, like, I just think untold does an amazing job with these docs. So like Merles, I don't know if you saw him, but all right, what's your both. thoughts? Manziel, man, I you know I'm never a fan of the guy, but I go in with an open mind, and honestly, I didn't learn anything new about the guy. There was nothing insightful about it. They you know they retraced his whole career, which most of us were familiar with, how he was basically an asshole, spend the money, getting drunk, and then like you just uh, mentioned about you know him having a gun and uh, mentioned about killing himself or whatever, and then you know he's gonna open a bar and then it ends. I was like I don't I didn't know him any better than I did before. I don't know you know not that he's gonna cut his wrist open and pour his heart out, but there was nothing. I mean, the, the, you know, the father didn't really give us much insight. Even, even he sounded like he knew what they were talking about. Like the, the night of the draft, they're like, oh, how come he didn't get picked? He's like, well, teams did their homework on him. It's like <laughs> his own kid who's throwing down, not really sore on him. I mean, he was a peck ahead. He didn't deserve to get drafted in the first round. I just, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of it. It just didn't really do anything for me. And not because I'm not a Manziel guy. It just, you know, when you watch a documentary, you want to learn things you didn't know before. And uh, that didn't happen with the Manziel one. The other one, uh, Jake Paul, those guys, you know, I'm, Probably like a lot of guys my age, like who are these dummies, these pack of heads. I don't even know where they came from initially, but 
that doc did a great job of showing you, you know, they came from like a working class family in Ohio. They just started doing the videos, uh, Jake got on the Disney show. They gave a great, like, uh, you know, what it, yeah, what it was a synopsis of all that shit. And they had a lot of, like, I thought humility. They, they, they realized they fucked up. Yeah, we were idiots. We did this stupid shit. They, they had a, a level of self-awareness I wasn't expecting. And yeah, I mean, obviously, that when you're, they're a part of it, you know, doing business with Netflix, there's going to be a little bit of uh, sugarcoating or whatever. They're not going to get, like, sewer themselves out there. But I thought it was really good. Uh, they got into, you know, the, the whole fucking history up to this so far. And what he, he beat, what's his face? Nate Diaz, right? That was actually yeah, not he a bad beat, little yeah, fight. Yeah, he beat Nate Diaz. So, yeah, it was a, the Jake Paul one really enjoyed. Uh, didn't like the Johnny Manziel one, but I'll tell you another sports doc on uh, Amazon Prime, just called Reggie, about Reggie Jackson, the New York Yankees great. I know half the crowd, audience is probably, who the fuck's Reggie Jackson right now? But tremendous doc, one of the biggest baseball superstars of the 70s, Hall of Fame, a legendary personality. So give that one a whirl if you're looking for a... Uh, uh, put it baseball doc, but yeah, I'm hoping. Well, what what did you though. think of the two documentaries? Yeah, the same with you on the Paul. I didn't know where these guys came from. I, I'm old as you, like you, and um, it was cool to to see how they they built up. And I agree with you; they seemed like pretty good guys. Then, like, then I I thought because I don't follow them, I know nothing about them. So I I really liked watching that one. The Johnny one, I the one thing I thought was funny when they said they made up the lie that his grandfather was a millionaire. Because that was crazy. I, I believe that. I remember telling people that when all this was going on, I'm like, oh, his grandpa's got oil money down there. He don't he don't care if he plays in the NFL. And then they're saying that was all a lie to, to cover that up. I thought that was really funny. I don't know which true or not. And just the, the most surprising thing to me, and I don't know why they put it in there, was that they're talking how he's like cleaning it up and he's like got a good life now. And then it seemed like he was going to be like off the booze. And he's sitting there with a beer at the end. Like, what, it was so weird. And that kind of threw me off at the end. But I, I, I love these documentaries. Like you said, they do a great job on them. When I'm sitting over here alone at night, there's no hockey on. I love watching those. What's uh, one story in the hockey world that you guys think deserves a documentary? Alan Eagleson. Ooh. Dirt bag. Well, union president, the guy who screwed Bobby Orr over. Yeah, I, I'd like to see a, a full a full doc on him and explain how every to everybody how he screwed a lot of people out of a lot of dough among other things what do you got Merles? yeah i would say I, I don't know if there's anything really out there and i know he doesn't like to do a lot of talking is about more about mario lemieux there's so much gretzky stuff and lemieux was he was right there in the same level and just he went through all the the cancer and everything i know there's some little stuff if you look but i'd like a, a newer documentary done on him also because he was my teammate maybe i would get thrown in there somehow in one of the clips so what do you got, G? <laughs> I don't know. I, I kind of think, and I've said this for a while, that I would love Chicklets to do something like this, but like I'd love to see a documentary about the Quebec Pee Wee tournament for like the people that don't know about it, for like the world to see how crazy this is and that kids are playing in front of like 10,000 people. It's, I think so many pros have gone through the tournament, and I just think it'd be cool to go back and talk to all the players who have got to see who got to play in it and now that are playing in the NHL and have succeeded from it. So yeah, I think that one, but there's so many ones. Like I, I just, I love documentaries and I think there's such a, a, a hole in the hockey world to, for documentaries. And um, I, I just think, yeah, there's, there's so many, there's so many different docs out there that can be made. Yeah. We talked about the Quebec. We got to get that going. I wanted to get a team. So I found out I was going to get a team and I was going to try to, get people from all over. I was going to put a powerhouse team together. I found out there's a rule. All the players have to live within a hundred miles of each other. So of where the team is. So that threw me off because back in my day, you could pick up guys wherever. So that threw me off. I'm not going to end up having a team, but the act the, the Vegas insider Migs, he's coaching a team up there this year, Vegas. Um, my other friends in uh, Rochester, uh, they got a team going up, so we could get in a couple locker rooms. We could get behind the scenes if we can get this documentary going. I would, I would gladly volunteer to go up there for the ten days and cover the, cover the kids and cover the nightlife in the in the town. You know what else I think could be a cool documentary would be about because you talk about it all the time, Merle. It's like every time we meet like a current Pittsburgh Penguin, or you're like, yeah, I, I suck so bad, so you guys could get Crosby. I think it'd be a documentary would be cool go. about like. The years leading up to Sidney Crosby, what was going on in the Pittsburgh Penguins organization? They were talking about selling the team. You guys were basically brought in to stink. Like I, I, I would love to just see that whole lead up, and then it kind of ends with, you know, winning the cups, all the cups, and Sidney Crosby and Malkin and Latang, who I apologize for saying is a Walmart version of Eric Carlson. I think I took it a bit too far there. 
Uh, I, that clip went a little viral last week. I definitely didn't. It was one of those things that I said, and right as it came off the, the tip of my tongue, I was like, fuck, I pushed that one too far. Yeah, especially when uh, he was talking to us in Nashville for like 20 minutes. We were playing with his kids and everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So to, to Chris, his family, the entire Pittsburgh Penguins organization, all the people at Pittsburgh, I sternly, sternly apologize. I, I got a documentary I think that we can definitely do. I've already started working on it. It'd probably be more called a vlog if us donkeys are doing it. But if we get this Swedish Global Series, if you guys make the trip over here, I got the itinerary starting. Got a few good things on there that, you know, I'm going to put it all together, pitch it to you guys. You guys go to the higher ups and see what's going to happen with it. You know what but, would be cool too would be, um, and I know ESPN filmed the the, the video about the team, but, but the 93 uh, uh, humane black bears, I think it would be an incredible to do a full documentary to going back, talking to all the guys, Monty, Paul Correa, all these guys that were on that team that now have had such, such successful NHL careers looking back and letting the world hockey world know like the, the kids of today, how dominant that team was. They have the little documentary from way back then on YouTube, uh, Back yeah. in the Woods. So if you're a listener out there, go check that out. Check out Monty with hair and the, hmm. the mock turtlenecks and, and that, that beautiful style that all those guys had back then with Korea and they had the two goalies. They were they were loaded. Uh, I just just thought of another one. G. It's uh, a documentary series on Showtime. It's called uh, Goliath about Wilt Chamberlain, uh, one of the legendary NBA NBA players. Real really gets in depth um, about his you know, not just the basketball, everything he did off court, including uh, his claim that he bedded twenty thousand women. That's how's that for a fucking number of parties? Twenty? Yeah, he said he slept with twenty thousand women. Like he just nonstop. That's a machine. <sighs> That's like, how do I mean, you even a, have time for I, that? <laughs> I know. It's like incomprehensible. Like, to, to think you would have any person would have 20,000 sex partners in, in their lifetime. And Wilt has still got it done. But it, it is great, especially if you're a, a basketball fan. They get into, you know, the history of it, his rivalry with Bill Russell. There's a lot of good old footage. So, uh, there's another one for you. But, uh, what else we got? G, anything, uh, anything rock and roll? I'm or? watching, uh, I don't know if you guys seen, I think it's older, Righteous Gemstones with, uh, the guy Kenny Powers. Yeah, and he's, he's basically Kenny Powers. If you love Kenny Powers, he's basically this in this show too. And it's just like a dumb comedy. Turn your brain off late at night. Grab a bowl of ice cream and what is that on? Laugh. It's on uh, HBO Max or whatever you call it yeah. nowadays. Yeah, the freaking site. They've been shitting all over that site too. I just thought of another one too. Winning Time is back on HBO as okay. well. That's the series about the 1980s Lakers. Uh, unbelievable team. Season one was last year. If you haven't seen it, it's dynamite. Check it out. But Episode two just in Sunday. Episode three will be this uh, Sunday. So if you're a hoop fan, it, actually, you don't even have to be a hoop fan for this. The dudes who play Magic and uh, Karima, unbelievable. It, a lot of laughs, a lot of basketball history. So check it out if you're so inclined. And uh, I think that pretty wraps it up for today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed Clayton Keller and Hal Gill. And we'll be back next week with yet another interview in our summer interview series. 20% off Tuesday, 20 Wednesday, entire and store. Wednesday. Get some good merch and we'll catch up with you next week. Have a good one, all. 